Welcome to Open House, the first ever conference for TikTok effects. The stream will start shortly, so stay tuned. Thank you. 
Welcome to Open House, the first ever conference for TikTok effects. The stream will start shortly, so stay tuned. show here. I'd like to welcome you to Open House, our first developer conference for TikTok effects. TikTok's mission is to inspire creativity and bring joy, and effects are a truly great example of how we do this. They help creators express themselves and tell richer stories while bringing a new level of innovation to the platform. I love using effects. You may have seen me try a few in my own posts. With Effect House, we are building a powerful tool that gives everyone the opportunity to reach a global audience of millions. Today, we are bringing together creators, brands, and our community to hear about what's ahead, learn from each other, and celebrate your contributions. Thank you for taking the time to be here today. I hope you enjoy the conference, and I look forward to seeing what you will create next. Thanks, Sho. Welcome to Open House. My name is Kathy, and I lead the Effect House team. We're thrilled to welcome you to our first ever Effect House conference. Today, we're gonna to give you a behind the scenes look at the impact of AR effects on TikTok, share some key milestones, as well as our vision for the future of AR creation and a sneak peek at our roadmap. Then we'll wrap it up with a celebration of our creator community that's made it all possible. Let's jump in. Two years ago, we invited our very first creators to try out Effect House, bugs and all, as part of our closed beta. Last April, we opened up access to all creators around the world, and this August, we exited beta. What an incredible journey it's been. Today, 25 billion videos have been made with community effects, and these videos have been watched more than 10 trillion times around the world. AR and effects exist in many forms today, but on TikTok, the level of creativity, usability, and visibility is unparalleled. That's because storytelling is at the core of every TikTok experience, and effects are an integral way for our creators to tell their stories. So when we thought about what kind of tools we wanted to build to empower our AR creators to make the types of effects that lend themselves to storytelling, we had a very clear vision for how to build Effect House. Now, I don't know about you, but give me a house with a high ceiling and... So, first principle, make sure the ceiling of Effect House is high enough, that the capabilities of the tool are powerful enough to accommodate extremely high quality, robust effects. We've launched features like Material Editor, Physics, and various generative effects, and more upcoming advanced capabilities that the team will share later on. At the same time, we wanted to make sure that creators could get in on the ground floor of Effect House with ease. So we built a baseline experience that makes effect creation accessible to more creators than ever. Through an intuitive tool design, easy to use templates, a library of guides and tutorials, a built-in asset library, as well as a growing suite of AI creation features, such as our asset studio to generate assets from a simple line of text, we're making it easier than ever for beginners to learn and create interactive effects for TikTok. And with our active community on Discord and forum ready to welcome anyone home, creators of any skill set can level up and climb to a higher floor at their own pace. And if you've been keeping an eye on TikTok, you may have noticed that recently we also rolled out another creation tool to make it possible to create effects directly in the TikTok app. Stay tuned for more about that in just a bit. Looking forward, we want to expand the house to make room for effects to be used in all kinds of other formats. We've recently made it possible so that effects can be used in photo posts on TikTok. And we've recently started making more community effects available for use in live videos and content that's uploaded to TikTok as part of our editing flow. Now, we're looking beyond just effects to new content formats and creation scenarios to expand the possibilities of what can be created in Effect House. Stay tuned. Okay, so that sounds like a fantastic house, but what if the structure is wobbly, you ask? Well, you didn't really think we would forget about making sure the foundation of Effect House is strong enough, did you? 
In the months leading up to our beta exit this summer, the team doubled down on performance optimizations and quality improvements to reduce crashes and improve both the tool quality as well as effect quality. And as we introduce more advanced capabilities going forward, this will remain a key focus area for us. And once you finally build your effects, you can share them with TikTok's vibrant global community. This is where TikTok's discovery engine kicks in to ensure that after you publish your effect, the right visitors get the right address to come appreciate your creation. Discovery is built into TikTok, which means effects have the potential to reach millions of people around the world and the best ones rise to the top, regardless of whether you have a million followers or a single follower. Finally, we're building a house big enough for all creators, including those who are interested in monetizing their effects. We're committed to supporting Effect House creators and unlocking monetization opportunities on and off the platform, whether that's through incentives to publish your first effect, regular challenges and missions, or our newly revamped $6 million Effect Creator Rewards Program for top effects, which we recently expanded to more regions and made accessible to more creators. Effect creators also have the opportunity to collaborate with brands and advertisers through making both organic community effects or sponsored branded effects. Today, we're very excited to announce that we're opening up creation of branded effects from just approved badged agencies to all creators. This means that any creator can now work with an advertiser on a branded effect. Time to start polishing those pitch decks. To learn more, join our brand session later today. And there you have it, the blueprint for TikTok's Effect House. So how do we actually build the house? For that, I'll turn it over to Guo Hui, Diego, and Weston from our engineering team. Hi, everyone. I'm Weston, a technical product manager on the effects team. I'm joined with our head of AR engineering, Guo Hui, and AR engineer, Diego. It's great to have you here. First question I have for you, what's your favorite TikTok effect? I really like this one called a uh, funny face. <laughs> wow, that's really great. What about you, Diego? Oh, I really love this one. It's called Soap Bubble, and it was made by one of our amazing creators. And what I love about it is that this creator came up with an idea that we didn't even think was possible. And it actually inspired a lot of the work that we did. Wow, that's awesome. Gohui, can you give us a little bit about the backstory that led us here? Sure, thanks, Weston. With Effect House, our goal is to build a powerful effect creation platform that lowers the creation barrier and allows everyone to become an effect creator. You know, our platform has come a long way in a relatively short amount of time. I'd like to tell you a bit more about the progress we have made. We focused on accessibility, performance, and the user experience as the foundations for Effect House. Effect House works without the need for plugins, additional hardware, or advanced models. We've also made it possible for creators to harness the power of generative adversarial networks, or GANs, without needing any machine learning experience. By tapping on the screen, you can access one of the many GAN models we've built and instantly add it to your effect. We call these generative effects. That's awesome. I love the bald generative effect. But you have such great hair. Why <laughs> yeah, would you yeah. want to lose it? <laughs> Social Kit is another feature that empowers creators to engage their friends and fans in telling compelling stories. This is our first feature in Effect House that dynamically pulls the user's friend information into your effect, which means your effect will be different for each person who might use it. It is a great way for creators to engage their friends and fans to tell the compelling stories. What are some of the other tools that we've launched this year? AI is another tool used to make it easier. We envision a future where creativity is universally accessible. To achieve this, we use a variety of AI features to turn your creative ideas into fun effect. Some of my favorite AI-powered features are Asset Studio and Artmaker. Asset Studio lets you generate your own assets, like a sticker or a face mask, using a text prompt. Art Maker can turn photos into other styles of art. Creators have made some really great stuff with these features, and we plan to launch many more next year. And today, we're introducing a game changer, creating interactive effects from a text prompt without any coding or visual scripting, being able to turn any prompt into logic-based interactions for your effects without having to dive into scripting logic or create hundreds of nodes. We're also introducing a full Vero effects platform called the VFX Editor. 
which is a comprehensive graph-based platform you can use to create a wide range of viral effects, from fireworks to confetti, rain to fire. Stay tuned for a deeper dive into both these new features later in the conference, and make sure to sign up for the beta programs to be the first to try out these features. So what's next for our effect platform? We're exploring many different areas, and the possibilities are endless. We envision a not-so-distant future, where creators can seamlessly augment their live broadcast with more effects, or interact with their friends across videos using augmented reality. The future of AR on TikTok could include any or all of these realities. We won't stray far from our original goal, using advanced technology and powerful tools to lower the barrier of creation, so anyone can create on TikTok and reach an audience. We are hosting a special section about the future of tech in Effect House later today. Make sure not to miss it. Diego, as an engineer on the Effect House team, you have hands-on experience building everything that Gohui just mentioned. Tell us a little bit more about how these tools are built. Yeah, of course. As engineers on the Effect House R&D team, we're building the canvas upon which creators bring their visions to life. It's an exciting challenge. Imagine the canvas of a painter, but for digital creators. That's what we at Effect House R&D are doing, crafting a robust, dynamic, and user-friendly space for creation. We approach the design of the Effect House canvas as we would a cityscape, each feature like a building, intricately architected yet modular. Using a data-oriented design approach, our aim is to provide a unified platform where both new and experienced creators can have seamless and scalable experiences. Why this particular design approach? We believe in accessibility and growth. Just as a city needs both skyscrapers and small boutiques to thrive, our canvas must serve the needs of diverse creators. That's why we modularize our architecture to allow for easy customization and feature expansion. Our R&D team's work translates to real benefits for creators. With our data-oriented development, we can quickly implement new features based on user needs. This has significantly accelerated our feature development process, enabling creators to enjoy a host of new capabilities like batch editing, the asset library, as quickly as they can think of them. And one more thing, multi-language support is here. We believe that creativity knows no boundaries and language should not be a barrier. Whether you speak English, Spanish, Portuguese, or Japanese, our canvas is your canvas. In essence, we are democratizing creativity. When we say anyone can create, we mean it. We're building not just a tool, but a powerful instrument that amplifies your creative voice, no matter your background or your level of expertise. We're really excited about everything we've built, but we don't build it for us. We build it for the creators. And the best part of our job is when we get to see the amazing trends and creations that you make with these features. We've added so many new features that we need an entire separate session to go through them. So please join our session, What You Missed in Effect House, where our technical community manager, Mingus, and I will provide an overview of all the new updates in 2023. Hey everyone, my name is Kudzi and I'm the head of creator marketing at TikTok. I'd like to talk to you about the experience of being a TikTok creator. Being a creator on TikTok is different because TikTok itself is different. We spent a lot of time today talking about the tools we've built to enable anyone to be a creator. Effect House is obviously a major part of that. We also have a full lineup of tools for content creation more broadly, from duet to voice filters to sounds and advanced editing tools at your disposal that make it easy for you to express your creativity. If you need some help getting started, check out TikTok University and our Effect House Crash Course and Accelerator programs. TikTok is also a place where you can easily build a community around your creativity. I spoke to one effect creator who told me that she now gets all of her effect ideas from her followers who leave effect requests in our comments every single day. And of course, effects themselves are a collaborative creation experience between the effect creator and the creator using the effects. Unlike on other platforms, on TikTok, you don't need to follow a formula or have a huge list of followers in order for your content to be seen. TikTok's For You feed surfaces content based on engagement, interaction, and interest, making it so that great content always has the potential to reach audiences far and wide. TikTok boasts a vibrant global community that's so often a launching pad for the biggest trends, and effects are such an important part of that as they're used to create engaging videos on TikTok Live Live, in brand campaigns and brand admissions, which means that there's a galaxy of opportunities for effect creators to make a global impact. It's simple. 
Creators create culture. We also believe that creativity should be rewarded. Creators can monetize their content with programs like the TikTok Creativity Program, TikTok Creator Marketplace, Effect Creator Rewards, and the Branded Effect Program. I can't wait to see all the amazing things you create, especially with some of these exciting new features that the team is showcasing today. I'll see you on TikTok. Over to you, Carol. Hey, I'm Carol, and I lead community efforts for Effect House. It's been a pleasure hanging out with one of the biggest AR communities, especially the half a million of you in our Discord. We've talked a lot about creating trends on TikTok with effects, and trends happen fast. What's cool about effects on TikTok is that as soon as you publish an effect, creators from around the world will start using it. It's not uncommon to wake up to see that people around the world are using your effect. The best part about TikTok being a video first platform is you get to watch all the videos that use your effect. When I talk to creators, they say that the best part about making effects, the co-creation and live feedback, being able to see how other creators tell their version of the story in real time. Trends also bridge cultures. TikTok is a truly global app and only on TikTok, you'll be able to connect with creators from around the world who will bring their own creativity to your effect. One of my favorite examples, creator Connie Wells braided hair on the weekends and a common struggle for anyone who braids is getting the middle part just right. To reduce time, Wells, a mechanical engineer, incorporated her engineering skills with her hairstyling talent. In two days, she uploaded the first iteration of the middle part filter, which not only garnered millions of views, but also brought awareness to the need for more inclusive beauty products that considered a broader range of hair types. TikTok partnered globally with creators to promote hashtag learn on TikTok. For example, the Indonesian Ministry of Education partnered with TikTok Indonesia to redefine classroom engagement. Thomas Asriel's first effect how Smart Are You, inspired by Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, got millions of people to test their knowledge, math, music, and science. What did you get on the quiz? Trends can also connect your creativity with the biggest names in entertainment and media. Ever imagine being at a Harry Styles concert, trying on his wardrobe virtually, or joining a K-pop star's and finishing their song lyrics? Eshan Chua probably never dreamt that he would get to make an effect for Harry Styles, appropriately named Harry Styles and made up of a collection of the outfits the singer has worn in the past few years. The effects not only allow you to try on Harry's outfits, but go as far as inspiring outfit choices and get ready with me videos for his concerts. One of my favorite effect house stories is the time Amy Poehler used creator Laurie Guillon's Red Flags effect in Amy's first ever TikTok video. That's the power of effect house. Something you create today can be used by anyone and everyone tomorrow. We'll hear later from Loyu Guyo, who's hosting a fireside chat with creator Chris Olsen. Make sure you don't miss it. Next, Amy on our product team is going to share something new we've been working on this year. Oh, hi there. Sorry, I was just watching TikTok. Hi, my name's Amy, and I lead the development for one of our newest experiences, the ability to create effects directly in the TikTok mobile app. Like Kathy mentioned, TikTok's mission is to inspire creativity and spark joy. With this new tool, we removed the hardware barrier so that as long as you have access to TikTok mobile app, you can create effects whenever and wherever you are. Furthermore, we made simpler versions of many of the key functionalities from the effect house so that creation process is as easy as creating videos on TikTok. We've been testing this feature for a while and recently launched into everyone on TikTok globally. Creators seem to really love them. Even during the beta phase, over 20,000 effects have been created and published on TikTok with this new tool every single day. And here are some cool effects you can create now on TikTok. They're pretty cool, right? To access the new effect editor, go to the video shooting mode, tap on effect and go to create tab. Then tap on the plus button. We can't wait to see what you create. Next, I'll hand off to Greg to let you know what to expect for the rest of the open house. Hey there, I'm Greg, and I work on the global community team at TikTok. One last item that we wanted to highlight is all of the ways that creators are making money with their effects. We've run over 50 effect challenges in the past two years, and we've given out over $250,000 in cash prizes to creators for these challenges. Not only that, we've also sent winning creators to Paris Fashion Week, London Fashion Week, the premiere of the new Mission Impossible movie, 
the red carpet at the Cannes Film Festival and the Toronto International Film Festival, even to the Eurovision Song Contest Grand Final. We recently announced new updates to our Effect Creator Awards program, which is now available to creators in 20 countries, and we lowered the requirements to join the program. In fact, go check because you might be eligible right now. Recently, we've seen so many creators start to receive meaningful cash payouts for their trending effects on TikTok, which is really encouraging to see. In fact, in the first month since we announced these updates to affect creator rewards, total monthly payouts to our creators have already doubled from this program. There's so much to be excited about, and we have so much more to look forward to today. In our next session, we'll talk about an exciting new experience that I cannot wait for you to hear all about. We also have some technical sessions showing how to get the most out of Effect House, including a session about our most exciting templates, and another one about harnessing the power of our material and VFX editors. If you're interested in learning how brands are using Effect House to power their objectives, don't miss our panel with Pluto TV to hear about their smash hit branded effect campaign. And then an amazing fireside chat with creator Chris Olson to hear his unfiltered view about TikTok effects, no pun intended. Thanks for joining us at Open House. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next session. Sneak peek, visual scripting made easy.
Hey, Renza. Hi, Mingas. For those of you who don't know, Renza's more than just a pretty face. In addition to being one of the models in the Effectos tool, he's also a technical product manager on our team. Thanks. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here today to show you what we've been working on lately. I think our creators are going to be really excited about it. Cool. Let's do it. So to start off, can you tell us what visual scripting is for any viewers who aren't aware yet? Sure. Visual scripting is how you make your IFA inter interactive. Instead of learning a coding language, uh, you connect different nodes together. Um, it's simple, very powerful. Uh, people have created thousands of games, branch narrative effects, even music creation tools with the visual scripting in IFA house. So it's a much simpler learning curve compared to learning how to code. But there is still a learning curve, right? Yes. Um, and our goal for IFA House is to use powerful tools to lower the barrier of creation. Uh, we want everyone to be able to bring their ideas to life and make interactive AR really quickly. So our team started thinking, how could we use technology to make it even easier to make interactive effects? And that's how we came up with EasyGraph. So EasyGraph is a text-to-script feature for FI House that uses AI to create visual scripting graphs. Uh, let me show how, how it works. Let's say we create a two image here. Um, one is butterfly, the other one is honey. And we're just using this two image to represent these two characters. And now, let's say that if we want to make a really easy interaction saying, I want this butterfly to catch this honey, and after catching it, the honey will just be randomized to a different place, then we probably only need two interaction, right? The one is, let's say, I tap the screen, and then this butterfly will follow my uh, touch position. And the second one is after this honey being collided, and after the collision, the, the honey will go to different places. So let's just ask AI, let's say, tap, to follow finger touch position. And then let's generate. Okay, now it's generated. And then we just drag the connection. Let's say we, we pick this butterfly here. And then we need another interaction, which is randomized position after a collision, let's say. Okay, now it's also generated. You can also click into it and you see these graphs and you can also play with the parameters uh, if you some, want some different detailed um, control of this subgraph. And now, like we generate it, and then we just drag this honey to this randomized position. Okay, now let's just click on the screen. You see when this butterfly is catching the honey, the honey will just randomize to different positions. So before, maybe if you want to do these two interaction, it, would re it takes really long time for mm -hmm. it to generate. Now you just ask AI, it would generate these interaction snippets for you, and you just connect them. It will make your um, making interactive effects really quick and easy. That's great. How long would it take for someone to assemble these subgraphs from scratch? Uh, it depends. Like, we've calculated ourselves, like, if you if this person has zero, let's say, blockage during the development, usually it takes, like, 17 seconds to connect one node. Most of the interaction like contain more than that. So usually like 10 or 20 or 30 even more. So it could be, you know, like half an hour or one hour to create some like a uh, really simple interaction if you really don't know how to use it. Wow. And you just did it right there with one click. Yes. So what else can this puppy do? Here are some examples of what we have uh, produced in testing so far. And those are really, you know, happy accidents because uh, we didn't know like AI actually can generate idea from ideation to picking graph nodes into generating logic. Like it can do everything itself right now. Here are some examples. Let's see. So this one is like change object scale upon collision. So like, you know, you can see like this cube would change the scale after the collision, which might be a really fun mechanism for mini games. And this one like cycle materials, each frame, it gives you this flashing effects and also um, play animated texture on smile. It can actually uh, know how to use the facial detection node and randomize rotation on collision. It's also could be another like a mini game mechanism where you, after the collision, it just change rotation. So you really need to find the balance, let's say. Um, 
And this one is like, it can also play with the timing. Like, let's say this one, it will reappear this object after the time, uh, after a certain amount of time when the trigger, uh, when it triggers the collision. So it will show something and something reappear and then missing, uh, it will disappear. So yeah, it just has a lot of potential. Rinza, what do you say to people who, or to affect creators who are concerned that maybe Easy Graph will replace them? Right now, AI can only do like, each model can only fulfill one task, but actually making an effect system, mm -hmm. like you need to set up your scenes, uh, you need to add the uh, assets, and you need to do, um, let's say, different interactive logic. Each task is very different and needs different kind of AI model to, to help. Um, and also, um, even let's say with these uh, model, it just makes each part of the uh, like creation efficiency higher. So um, it will not replace, it will just make your life easier and actually, you know, unleash your creativity even more. So you sometimes like you have this idea and then you can just fulfill it really quickly. So in the end, what, what matters more becomes the creativity itself. So your creative is not blocked by the fact you cannot even realize it. So Rinza, is this feature shipping tomorrow? Uh, no, uh, we're still testing it. Like any AI feature, we need to spend a lot of time fine tuning and adding a lot of data to train the model before it can actually unleash all the creativity from our creators. Um, also currently is only generating logic, but we want to add more editor commands, such as like adding multiple different objects at the same time with interactions. But we do want to get it into the hands of some creators as soon as possible. That's right. So we're gonna share a sign-up form where creators can sign up to join the EasyGraph beta on the screen here, and also on the Effect House website later. Thanks, Renza. Thanks, everyone. We're really excited about this, and we hope you're too. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next session. Sneak peek into Effect House. Creating TikTok effects has never been this easy. With Mobile Effect Editor, you can now create your own effects using templates or from scratch right in the TikTok app. All you have to do is tap on Effects and find the new Create tab. Once you're in the Create tab, you can choose from existing templates like Image Randomizer, Makeup, and more. Or you can build your own effects from scratch by tapping on the plus button. This allows you to create more advanced effects by pinning stickers to different body parts, determining your own interactions and building more customizable randomizers. Like we said, creating your next effect is as easy as ever. That's just some of what's possible with effect creation on TikTok. Go ahead and give it a try.
everyone. Welcome to our FEX Research Lab. I'm Garrett. And I'm Felicity, and we're on the research and development team for Effect House. We help make effect creators' dreams come true by imagining and inventing the best storytelling technology around. Today, we will be taking you on a tour and highlighting some new technology our research and development team has been exploring, and peel back the curtain just a bit to show you how we work. You ready, Garrett? Yes, let's get into it. Hello, I'm Guo Hui. And I'm Jun Cong, and we are from the Effect Engineering team. Before we start showing you the cool tech we are working on, let's talk about our process. The Effect House team is made up of uh, dedicated and uh, talented engineers and designers who push forward the technology. We figure out how to take complex tech and make it easy to use for content creators. We start with a lot of brainstorming, iterating, and testing countless ideas until we land on technology that we feel will help video creators tell amazing stories and create standout content. We often test our newest effect creation technologies by releasing what we call showcase effects. Showcase effects are effects that leverage our newest effect creation tech as early proofs of concept. They teach us a lot about how people use effects that feature newer technology and how we can improve the effect creation tech. Behind these tools are months of research, analysis, and testing to ensure stability and the quality of our technology. When our team creates effects, we look to see how the TikTok community responds to what we have made. If people really seem to love a new kind of effect, we'll take our learnings, optimize the technology, and make features available in Effect House that allow effect creators like you to create the same kind of advanced effects yourselves. We create components, nodes, and tools that allow the tech to work on a variety of devices in all kinds of environments and for all creators. One good example is that we standardized our popular brush subgraph and converted it into its own 2D brush node. We have improved the visual quality and made it easier for creators to add brush features to their effects. After we integrate it into Effect House, that's where you come in. From there, you create viral effects with complex technology and bring it to the world. And that's our process. Let's pass it off to Felicity and Leo, who are going to talk a little bit about 3D GAN. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the world, world of 3D, 3D GAN. GAN. Hi, I'm Leo, a 3D designer at TikTok. And hi again, I'm Felicity. In general, GAN, or Generative Adversarial Network, allows us to modify an image or video to look like another set of images. As an effect creator, you've already seen generative effects like hair eraser, eyebrow eraser, pucker, pout, side eye, and aged. Those are all 2D GANs, but 3D is the next frontier. You might be thinking, We've been transforming people into 3D characters for quite a while, and you're not wrong. In the past, we've used 3D face masks. These have been great for storytelling and allows people to take many different forms. But these effects mostly add 3D objects to the person's face. Now, we can actually train our models using 3D geometry that we create. For example, I create 3D characters with blend shapes to control how the face moves as it blinks, smiles, and talks. After working with our engineers, this 3D geometry then gets mapped to the people's faces in the neural network. Combined with smooth blending, we're able to transform creators into realistic 3D characters. Hey Felicity, what do you think of my outfit today? Uh, you look good. Uh, but you should probably ask our fashion experts Jilly and Jing Tong. Welcome to the Fashion Lab! The Effect House team is so excited about how fashion and personal style have come to life in the form of effects on TikTok. Hello, I'm Julie from the engineering team. So we've done a lot of development over the years to enable the creation of fashion effects. We have a body tracking capability that allows you to take a piece of digital clothing and have it follow your movements. As you can see, this looks cool, but the types of fashion that work well are more sculptural and rigid. There's a lot of technical challenges that come with digital clothing. For example, rendering different materials and simulating how fabrics falls on the body is a big problem we have to solve. We're putting a lot of effort into real-time clothes simulation, allowing designers and engineers to create realistic and dynamic virtual clothing experiences. We use advanced machine learning techniques to accomplish this. We train a model for each garment to learn its dynamics and apply it in real time 
to predict the physical motion of the garment. This is also combined with our own custom physics engine. The same physics engine was also recently launched for Effect House creators to use to make fun mini games with. With this try-on technology, creators will be able to monetize their effects by working with other brands and influencers. You could even start your own digital fashion line. We are hoping to make the virtual try-on pipeline more intuitive for Effect House users down the line. We'll do this by creating a plugin that is compatible with common digital content creation tools to streamline bringing your 3D designs into Effect House and add a physics on it. That's all about fashion for the time being. Let's move on to the next section. We're also building tech called Neuromotion that allows us to mimic facial movements and gestures. Similar to 3D GAN, we trained our machine learning model with different videos of sarcastic eye rolls and mapped this motion to an image. The result is super fun and dynamic. You might use this feature to mimic movements for animated characters or whatever other use case you can imagine. If we combine your motion with LLM, we can even use audio and text to drive the motion and make characters talk back to you. In the future, it would be amazing if Effect House creators could train their own neural motion models to use and share throughout the platform. The sky really is the limit. So that's all we have time for now, folks. Hope you enjoyed our little sneak peek to give you more insight into what we're working on. There's always more to come. As you can see, Effect House is quickly becoming a super powerful tool that allows you to reach a wide audience with the latest and greatest technology. Make sure to connect with our socials to get the latest updates. And keep the dream alive. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next session. Fireside Chat, Chris Olson and Laura Guyon. Thank you.
Hi there, I'm Laura Guillon. I'm an AR creator and filmmaker based in Paris, France. And you might've seen some of my AR effects, including my red flags, emoji word challenge, and my love life tarot. Hi, I'm Chris Olson. I'm a creator on TikTok who also happens to love using effects. So I'm really excited to be here today. Chris has 12.2 million followers on TikTok under his handle at Chris, and that's not even including his spam accounts. It's insane. Chris, I'd love to hear more. Tell us about you and your journey to today. TikTok has been such a journey for me in general, but over the past few months, I feel like we've really seen not even a rebirth, but just a, a, the birth of the filter boom. I mean, it feels like filters are everywhere on the app, which is really exciting. And I feel like there's such a fun way to not only show off your personality, but connect to your audience because what a filter you do is a filter they can do as well. So not only is it something that they're watching you do, they feel like they are in a game where they can play along. And I feel like it's just been such a beautiful way to not only create content, but create content that's engaging and that people enjoy watching. And to see the response, I think, has been so exciting. And that's what's motivated me to keep going to see how much people are really enjoying them. That's amazing. Chris, I'm curious, what has your TikTok journey been like? How did you get started? And do you remember when you started using effects? I started, um, it was April 11th of 2020 was the first video I ever posted. And I really started TikTok as a hobby. I was not expecting it to turn into what it did, but I think some of the, that's what the beauty of the app is, is that you can go forward just enjoying creating and it can become something completely different or something that can support you or something that can become a job in a way. And I think um, that's kind of what happened. It was a happy accident. I had always been into performing. I had always been an entertainer, but when it became more of a job, that was just sort of a happy accident. And I remember I had always been using filters, but over this past summer, I decided to really start utilizing them in a way where I was just going to do trial and error, which I think is a big pillar of TikTok. You make a lot of videos, some things work and some things don't. So I just thought this is kind of an easy way to try some of this stuff at home, see what people are liking. And when I started making a lot of videos with filters over the summer, it's kind of like, I felt like I my, my channel was renewed in a way. I started making a lot more videos a day because I was really enjoying doing them viewership was higher than ever and it felt like um I, I had that was where my channel had a rebirth in a way was when i started working with filters so again it was sort of a happy accident as i feel like so much of tiktok is and that's how it that's how it all began that is so amazing to hear and especially what you mentioned about the rebirth since i know you've been using a lot of effects in your videos recently but it's mind-blowing seeing the engagement with the audiences. I'm curious to hear about what has it been like engaging with your audience before and after using effects and what are people coming to you for now? I think I was always engaging with my audience in a way, but I think before effects it was engaging in a different kind of way because again, I think one of the beauty of effects and filters is that if a fan or a follower sees their favorite creator using a filter, they're able to do that exact same thing and use the filter right after. So they feel like they're doing something together. And so that's where I feel like the engagement has changed. And it's also kind of it, like people are able to suggest which filter to use next. You're able to be tagged in them. It's kind of like a game that we're all playing rather than creator over here and viewer over there. It's like everyone is kind of together in this sense, which I feel like is one of the big differences about a lot of the effects. That's so true. And I, I think that you do a really good job of telling stories when you use effects. You're not just using them, you're bringing your personality to the table, you're reusing them. Um, I'm curious, do you remember what was the first effect you ever used? I do remember the first ones I used that kind of caught on as a bit of a trend were those um, celebrity murder mystery filters. I remember that became, that was such a big thing over the summer and I started using them a bunch and they're created by another wonderful creator, Juliet. And um, 
that is where I really found the beauty of the storyline in a filter because you're literally telling a story with who is our murder victim and then who found the body, who's the detective, all of those things. And I felt like that's where I learned how to create a storyline in this way. And then as I started using other filters, it was kind of fun to find different ways to create this storyline. Like for example, um, some of your filters, like the Fall Fortune one is one that comes to mind or beige flags. Um, I remember just like I kept doing it and kept getting these answers that were it, it was almost like the filter was reading my mind and that just became the storyline there. Sometimes you go into creating one of these videos and you don't know what the storyline is going to be and it kind of reveals itself to you, which is another one of the beauties of the filters. Um, so it's it's again, there's because of the volume of of filters that there is on the app now, which I think is so exciting. There are so many opportunities to create different stories or to be surprised by stories that are being dropped in front of you. And I think that's just one of the big beauties of the filters. I love that. And I cannot confirm or deny if the filters are reading your mind. But I will I th say- I, They must be. <laughs> yeah. You know, advanced technology. No, you, you always right. get the best answers and you, you've got the best reactions for them. So very entertaining watching your filter videos. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. I am curious about your overall content strategy. Just how do you approach what you decide to make and post on TikTok? And then how does that compare with your effect content strategy? You know, I think before filters, it was very much based on all real life experiences. It was, what, what am I doing this week? What is exciting that I could film? I was, I was much more of a plan ahead kind of person. And then I think when filters came along, it was more like, okay, let me discover what filter I can use today. What new filter um, can be utilized? And I, I think it kind of, it made my life as a creator much easier because I didn't, I still live, I still live a crazy life and I'm going all these different places to create videos. And if there's a Taylor Swift concert that week that I'm going to, best believe most of my videos are going to be about that because that's really yeah. exciting to me. Yeah. But if there's not much going on, I'm able to create excitement in my own life by doing a filter and having a storyline be revealed to me. And I just did all of that in the comfort of my own home. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like in a way filters provide accessibility to a lot of creators who they may not have a lot going on. They may not have too much time in their day, but they're able to create a very fun and engaging video because a filter has been added on the app. And so I feel like it's opening a lot of doors for a lot of creators and in ways because there are now people on the app I've seen who are almost like unofficial filter creators. Um, they All they do is post videos using filters or creating storylines, just doing that. And I think that's such an amazing way to connect with an audience because they're able to do that without anything else going on um, from the comfort of their own home. And I feel like that's just a really exciting new wave of things on the app. Totally. It's like, like you said, it's like a new creator niche, uh, filter, right. filter, creator, video creator. Um, but as well, they're mini games, they're engaging, they, they start a conversation right. and, and they're low pressure. We're just here to have fun. Yeah. And you're able to, I think with a lot of them, you are able to learn a lot about the creator. I think sometimes the, the issue about people just finding a niche or niching down is um, people get popular for creating videos about one particular thing. And then when they try to be multifaceted and show the rest of their personality, a lot of the time people are like, okay, well, we want to see, or we want to see the original thing. This is what we came here for. But I think with filters, because there's such a wide range of them, if you're a creator using the wide range of them and you do a murder mystery one day, my fall fortune the other day, a girl dinner the next day, you're still showing your personality through the vehicle of these filters. So when you do create things, otherwise people have fallen in love with the way that you react to things or the way that you tell stories. So you're able to continue sharing yourself in that way um, while also feeding your niche, which I think is just a really exciting side to filters on TikTok. I love that. I think it's a very delicate balance. And like you said, 
Yes. No one has to niche down. You know, the internet wants to love you for you and what you're interested about when you're interested about it. And so it is awesome to hear that effects have been helping people relate to and, and talk about themselves and express their personalities through um, yeah. an effect and a game. Right, right. That's awesome. You use a lot of effects, which is amazing. How do you yes. find them? I go to your page. Oh. I go to your page <laughs> and I yeah. see if Laura has posted a new filter. Right, right. Um, but that uh, uh, that's not even really a joke. I will, you know, as I mentioned, Juliet is an amazing filter creator. Laura, you are an amazing filter creator. Um, there are there are certain there there are a lot of people. I think there's a, another woman named Chantel. Chantel filters. There are a lot of creators who have dedicated a lot of their space on the app to creating these filters. And um, I have gone to their pages to see if they've posted new ones. Um, if I'm in search for a new filter, or it just happens to come up while I'm scrolling through TikTok and I see people using a new filter that everyone's getting excited about. That's how I found the Fall Fortune filter. That's how I found um, beige flags. I think for girl dinner, I had gone to your page. Um, for Disney murder mystery, I had gone to Juliet's page and see if she had posted a new one. So it's a bit of both. It's it's both seeking them out and letting them come to me. Um, I think I think scrolling on the app is your best friend for finding new things that are trending, but also being a bit proactive because sometimes I would be the first or one of the first people to use a filter and then it became a trend and that's really cool and helpful too. So it's a bit of both always. I was gonna say it must pay off to curate and hit up your speed dial of AR creators because like you said, you do often end up starting trends. Like as good as an effect might be, it, it's really, it'll start to reach the masses once, you know, once it'll start to reach the masses once creators like yourself start using it, expressing with sure, it. Sure, yeah. And yeah, we see your video at the top of those effect pages, that's for sure. I love it, I love it, yeah. Um, I Do you do this? I mean, they, uh, when, when you see a video in your feed with an effect that you wanna use, do you end up using it right away or do you save it for later? How do you track that? It, it really depends. I think there are some, which one was it? It was, I, I know I've, I've continued mentioning the same ones, but the two that really stick out to me were beige flags and fall fortune, especially because if you go on my page and see the engagement around them, it's really high and that was really exciting. And I think one reason for that was because I found them pretty early. And when I created the video, people were in the midst of watching all of their beige flags or fall fortune videos. It was still new and exciting. And I think when I find one of those, I'm like, I need to make this video right now. Or I think Fall Fortune, I saw it the night before and I was like, that's what I'm doing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so it's both, but um, I think it I think it depends. It definitely depends on um, when I find it and what the trend is in the moment. That's awesome. And I'm sure a lot of creators use your account also as a reference for what filters to be using and to be having fun with, myself included. Right. I love seeing all of your videos and I think, what are some new effects I can try today? I love it. I mean, that's the goal too. Last but not least, Chris, I have a surprise for you, okay? The holiday okay. season is, is imminent and I have a gift for you to Chris from Laura and it is not oh my in this gosh. box. It's actually not in this box, okay. I'll put this away. It's gonna be on your TikTok account um, Chris, okay. I have made a custom AR effect for you. Oh and my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you deserve one. You used like, you've used like a million of them. So it's finally time to give you wow. one for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. It's called my cuffing season because I know you're going to be having the juiciest cuffing season of them all. So excited to I'm follow obsessed. it. And um, yeah, now your audiences and everyone on TikTok can start using it. Perfect, wow, I'm so excited to use it. <laughs> I'm excited to see what story it tells me. I yeah. can't wait. Juicy secrets, we'll see. Hope you like it. I'm sure I will. <laughs> and that's it. Thanks for joining this fireside chat with Chris. So wonderful having you, Chris, and hearing about your AR journey using AR effects in your videos. Can't wait to see what you make next. I hope this gave you a little more insight on creators and the best way to use effects, and I can't wait to see how filters continue to evolve in the future. Thank you, Laura, and thank you, TikTok, for this amazing conversation. Hope to talk to you all soon. 
Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next session. What you missed in Effect House. It's Natalie. To celebrate my second anniversary of creating effects in TikTok, I want to share results I've achieved over this time. Two years ago, I received an invitation letter with access to the beta version of the program. In two years, I've made a lot of effects for the community, gained badges and an audience that supports my new work. I also participated in contests and won a prize from Niantic. But the most important thing for me is the trust of the brands and artists for whom I created the effects. I'm pleased to have achieved such results and will confidently move towards new goals with Effect House. More to come? Hey everybody, it's your friendly technical community manager, Mingus. And I'm Weston, a technical product manager on the Effect House team. He's friendly too. <laughs> Today we're going to give you a summary of some of the awesome features we've added to Effect House this year. Should we get started? Let's do it. So we can start with generative effects. These use generative AI technology to transform the user's face dynamically in real time. We've launched 15 of these in Effect House and some of them are really wild. So generative effects are a one-click feature that instantly add character to your effect. Access through the object menu, generative effects can be used for all sorts of creations. Hair eraser and eyebrow eraser can be used to mask out real world features, to then layer makeup, wigs, or other objects on top of them. Effects like thrilled or sad face are more humorous. You can even take a look into the future with aged. We have a pretty robust set of physics features in Effect House. I know, I'm a big fan of them. Let's dive in. Components like rigid body and collider put objects under the influence of Effect House's physics engine. This allows you to simulate real world physics inside of your effects. I'll show you how to add a rigid body to a sphere. First, we'll click the sphere and we'll go add component. Here, I'll add a rigid body component to the ball. That'll make it fall. Then I'll add a sphere collider. Now the ball will bounce all over the alpaca's head. Creators truly never cease to amaze us with their creativity and technical skills. Like when creator Not Iron Man used rigid body and collider physics features to create the viral wrecking ball trend. This Wrecking Ball Challenge was a series of rhythm effects that garnered over 4 million posts. An extensive collection of assets live in our Intool Asset Library. We offer both 3D and 2D assets, a range of materials, face effects, filters, screen effects, and visual scripting setups to help get projects rolling. Depending on the month, there may also be assets available specific to ongoing challenges, like our Minecraft Live Effect Challenge. One of my favorite assets is under the Materials category, and it's called Tiger Skin. Uh, with just one click, you can see I'm able to bring it into my project. And then if I pull an asset from our 3D category, like Rancher Cowboy Hat, you'll see that I'm quickly able to combine the two. And now I have this tiger skin hat on. We have a few features in Effect House that use AI technology. The first I'm gonna show you is Asset Studio. In the top bar here, you'll see I can click Asset Studio, and then this window pops up. What this does is it allows me to easily generate 2D stickers or face masks using text prompts. So if we use the default text prompt right here at Cheeseburger, you'll see if I click Generate, within a few seconds, Effect Test will provide me with four 2D cheeseburger stickers to choose from. I'm then able to select a few and click Import to import them into my project. If I'm not happy with that, I can always click Generate again 
and it will give me four new stickers to choose from. I can also jump over to face mask. What this feature will do is it's gonna give you a 2D texture mapped to our face mask object. So with one click, it will apply onto our face mask. So again, I'll use the default prompt here, a tiger, same as stickers, I can click generate. And then within a few seconds, you'll see I have four options to choose from for tiger makeup. Throw me a curveball. An alpaca. I'll put an alpaca, and within a few seconds, you'll see we have these four alpaca face masks to choose from. I will do this one in the bottom left, import it, and you can now see within seconds, I am an alpaca. Wow. The next AI feature we have is access through our home screen. So for Artmaker, I'm gonna access it through our template panel. So I will just select it right here. And what this feature does is it's gonna allow me to apply a style using AI to the entire effect. So that being the camera texture, objects I've added, it will uh, redraw them all in the style of my choice. So I'm gonna click Artmaker here in the hierarchy. I'll click Generate Artwork. And then I have options of four styles. So there's pop art, fantasy, retro anime, or classic anime. And then I also have control of the text prompt. So because of the month, I will do a festive holiday scene, bright lights, colorful, snow falling, um, happy. And then uh, I'll click confirm. And then as soon as I tap on my preview panel, it should apply my prompt to my screen. Cool. Weston, do you wanna tell them about user media texture? Absolutely. User media texture is an asset that allows TikTok creators to incorporate images from their camera roll into effects. You can use user media texture to make an effect with a custom image as the background, kind of like the green screen effect on TikTok. But you can also use it as a texture on anything, including 3D assets. With the user media texture feature, a creator in France named SIGGRAPH made an incredible effect called Custom Gallery, which allows video creators to showcase a series of their images as if they're wandering through a museum. It's been used by almost 2 million creators. That's a lot of museums. Let's talk about one of the most underrated parts of effect creation, the icon. The icon. I have this effect here, but I need an icon for it. For those who don't know, when you're publishing an effect to TikTok, you're gonna need a little icon or a thumbnail for it. So what we've done is we've made that super easy for you. If you don't wanna jump to another software, we have this feature here. It says create icon in the tool. You can click that, and then within one click, you'll see I have all these options of faces to choose from, and I can apply my effect by default to any face that I want. Uh, when I'm happy with the face, I can crop it, I can move it around, and then I can click done. When submitting my effect, automatically now, I will have that thumbnail applied as my effect icon. Weston, would you like to tell them about Target Tracker? Yeah. The Target Tracker is a new object that allows AR objects to respond to real-world images. Target Tracker identifies your upload image, known as the target, and instantly situates a designated object wherever the target is detected in real life. To add a Target Tracker object, click Add Object in the Hierarchy panel and go to AR Tracking and then select Target Tracker. It's that easy. When we launched Target Tracker, we hosted a worldwide scavenger hunt where creators from all over the world used TikTok to find stickers we placed in the real world that could be activated through an effect. And congratulations to our winners. Let's talk about Social Kit. So Social Kit's a very fun feature we offer. It's a texture that you can apply to your effects. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna give me the ability to pull information from my TikTok friends' profiles. So it can pull their profile photos or it can also pull their usernames but it has to be a mutual. So it has to be someone I follow who also follows me back. Like us. Like us. Um, so as an example, I could make a randomizer effect, who's your co-host, I could use social kit, and then it would go through my TikTok friends, and then hopefully it would land on your profile. Creator Bartel Games combines social kit and our physics toolkit to make a mini game called Crazy Road 2, where you have to drive faster and faster, dodging profile pictures from your friends list. Weston, I know I've said this a lot, do you want to tell them about our performance test? I'd love to. Cool. Prior to submitting your effect, it's highly recommended that you test your effect's performance to ensure it works properly after publication. To test your effect's performance, click the Test Performance button in the title bar. Then click Run Test. 
If your effect passes the performance test, you may proceed to submit your effect. If your effect fails the performance test, click View Suggested to open the Technical Optimization Guide, which contains guidelines on troubleshooting performance issues. Hey Mingus, why don't you show us the draw on touch interaction? So as Weston alluded, we have what's called interactions in our tool. Those are prepackaged subgraphs that any of you can use that hopefully make your life a lot easier. In order to access this particular interaction, I'm gonna have to add a screen image first. So once I add my screen image, uh, I can click it. And then down here, I can click add interaction. And then through the screen touch category, I can scroll down and select draw on touch. What that's gonna do is it's gonna bring up this draw on touch interaction. And you'll see right away, Weston, I can draw on my screen. So this is a cool way if you want to add the option for users to create their own art within the effect. Um, if you want people to be able to draw pictures or write things in their effect, there's also all sorts of properties you can mess around with, like the color and the size of the stroke, uh, the feathering of it. Oh, and don't forget about our entire material editor. We have a whole other session for that. So if you're curious to learn more about material editor, stay tuned. That was a lot of features, but I think we launched a lot of stuff outside of the Effect House tool. That's true. We added a lot of programs this year to help you learn how to use Effect House, monetize your creativity, and more. We have a program called Ambassadors to celebrate and support our top creators. They get first dibs on new features and updates, as well as partnership opportunities. You can apply for this program by getting a diamond badge in Effect House. If you're interested in becoming an ambassador, we have a session later in this conference where you can hear directly from a few top creators. So definitely tune into that. Learning any new tool from scratch can be tough. So we launched a video course called Crash Course, which shows you the basics. We also launched an accelerator program, which took creators through six weeks of tutorials and workshops to help them level up. We already wrapped up this year's accelerator, but stay tuned for the announcements about next year's accelerator program in 2024. We launched a ton of challenges this year. One of my favorites was the Minecraft challenge we wrapped up a few weeks ago. We saw so many fun games and effects made for this challenge. I'm sure you saw them on your feed. The Minecraft assets are actually still available in our asset library, so you can make a sheep or creeper effect anytime you like. I also loved our Top Creator Hackathon, which is a challenge we organized for creators with platinum and diamond badges. The caliber of submissions for this challenge were incredible. It was also really fun to see our creator Jan win our behind the scenes challenge and get to travel to the Cannes Film Festival and walk the red carpet. Congrats, Jan. Your effect really blew us away. One last thing, our Effect Creator Rewards program. This program provides cash payouts to creators for trending effects on TikTok. We recently lowered the requirement to join and expanded it to 14 more regions. Wow, that's a lot going on. It's just the start, my friend. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Come hang out with us on our forum anytime. Stay tuned for our next session, coming right up. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next session. Catch the wave, creating with TikTok trends. I'm Steven. I'm an Effect House creator, and this is my Effect House story. On your mark, get set, go! What you gonna get me? I'm inside one Oh my god! House is more than just a program for making AR experiences. It's a platform for expressing your creativity, and that's what I love most about it. That and the amazing community of creators that work with it.
Hello everyone, my name is Miles Stevens and I'm a community manager on Effect House. Welcome to Creating Trending Effects on TikTok. Today, I will be joined by three Effect House creators who know a thing or two about creating a trending effect. Let's meet them now. Chantelle Filters is a very talented creator calling in from across the pond. Her effects have taken the UK by storm. We're always excited to see what kind of brilliant effect she has up her sleeve. Hi everyone, I'm Chantal Parker, also known as Chantal Filters. I'm an Effect House ambassador, and you may have seen some of my popular effects, such as the My Barbie Life effect and the full face and body tattoo effect. Thanks to Effect House, I've been able to create my passion for AR effects and turn it into a full-time career. I'm really grateful to be here today. Thanks, Chantal. Now, let's meet our next creator panelist, Bai Kasai. Bai Kasai is another very talented creator hailing from the city that never sleeps, New York City. Not only is Bai Kasai keeping us preoccupied with stimulating minigame effects, he also does a great job helping the community navigate the complexities of Effect House. Hey everyone, my name is Kasai, uh, also going by Bai Kasai on TikTok. I love creating gaming effects. I love keeping up, keeping up with uh, current events and whatever is trending and cool and fun. So creating on Effect House has really enabled me to really interact with the community and just have a lot of fun in general. Thanks, Kasai. And last but not least, let's meet our final panelist, Exo Jordan Louise. Exo Jordan Louise is an effect creator who likes to use her TikTok for good. Joining us from the West Coast, aka the best coast, please give a warm welcome to one of our OG creators who is always taking beauty effects to the next level. Hey everyone, my name's Jordan. Um, I'm also an Effect House ambassador and I've been in the immersive space for almost three years now. A few of my effects include the My Seed Makeover game and the Filter for Good, and I just really love creating fun and beautiful experiences for people to enjoy. So this is the Creating Trending Effects session. So, um, Chantel, can you tell me about what some of your trending effects were, what they were about, and um, how you ended up coming up with that idea? Yeah, so I create a lot of randomizer effects where the user is given a random answer to a question. And I think one of my most popular effects has to be the My Barbie Life effect, where the user gets three different answers to which Barbie they are. Are they fun Barbie? Are they fashion Barbie? Are they beach Barbie? Where they would live? Do they live in a pink mansion, a pink caravan? Um, and what kind of transport do they have? Do they have a pink jet? Do they have a pink UFO? Do they have a pink bike? And it was a really fun uh, effect to create. It really capitalized on 2023 being the Barbie era. <laughs> That's amazing. Did you, did you create the effect before the Barbie movie came out or after the Barbie movie came out? Actually, I was really late to the Barbie party. I think I must have been one of the last people to go and watch the Barbie film at the cinema, <laughs> which I'm surprised about because I'm such a huge Barbie fan. Um, but the idea to create a my life type effect had always been in my mind and I actually wanted to create an effect which told the user what job they will have, where they would live and the type of car they would drive. And it had always been in my drafts and always been, um, I just never got around to finishing it. So instead of finishing that, I thought, you know what, I'm going to make it more Barbie inspired. So it's going to be instead of what job, like what Barbie are you? And I'm going to Photoshop all the houses and all the cars. I'm going to Photoshop them all pink to time with the Barbie theme. And I think that is what made it such a success. I think if, if it had just been the my life effect, it would have not been anywhere near as successful as the Barbie effect. That's amazing, Chantel. Jordan, let's go over to you. Uh, do you have any um, trending effects? And um, what were some of the what were some of your favorite videos uh, using those effects? Yeah, I would say my biggest trending filter is the filter for good, uh, where users drag a watermelon and collect seeds along the way to basically unlock a new look. Um, so in creating that, I pledge that all of the earnings from the Effect Creator Rewards program would be donated to humanitarian aid organizations. So I think it gained so much popularity because so many people kind of supported the intent behind making it and shared the same views and 
Um, there are so many kind of creative videos used with the effect. I would say my favorite, being someone who appreciates like makeup even outside of like makeup filters. Uh, my favorite creator who used the filter for good effect was Huda Beauty. Um, so seeing her use it was really cool. It must be such a surreal moment when there is an influencer or a video creator who uses an effect that you made. I mean, I can't even, I can't even imagine. That must be the best yeah, feeling. for right. sure. Um, and <laughs> and Kasai, let's go over to you. I mean, same question. Tell us about some of your trending effects. Um, you know, how did you come up with the idea for them? And are there any crazy people that have used them? Uh, let's see. So most of my effects normally, it's generally based on things I like, things I'm interested in, or, you know, nostalgia. So one of my favorites was the multiplication effect that I made where um, the user is given a few seconds to solve five multiplication-based questions and they have to tap on the screen to answer it. Initially, I thought that was very niche. I was like, oh, I'm making this because I like it. There may be some people that like it, but for those few people, um, this is for all of us to share. Uh, little did I know, a lot of people like multiplication and it got very competitive. It was so fun. Um, one of the challenges was creating a UI for buttons so it's not too overwhelming on the screen but still still clear enough as to what you're supposed to do. So it was a lot of trial and error, testing out different ways the buttons could be arranged, how big the buttons should be, where you put in, where you put the answers in, all that. So it was a very fun process and um, I wouldn't say a creator per se, just more so a community on TikTok. I am just now in love with the multiplication community, the math community on TikTok, because I feel like we're all family now and I didn't know it was there. So getting introduced to so many creators who love math or just love multiplication or their timetables, it was really fun and I really enjoyed it. So Kasai, you bring up a really great point, um, creating effects for things that you really love and things that you really care about. I think, you know, the more niche the community, usually the more impactful the effect can end up being. Um, and I'm guilty. I've used the multiplication challenge effect. Um, I actually used it at TikTok and I was pretty shocked to see how many of my coworkers weren't uh, that great at math. <laughs> <laughs> We've noticed that you like to bring in pop culture moments into your effect projects. How, how do you do that? Like, is there is there any method to the madness there? Effects on their own are so cool and interesting, but when you add that layer of context, especially at a time where everyone gets the context or everyone's like invested in it. So similar to what Chantel did with um, Barbie, when Barbie was huge, all he had to say was hi Barbie and everyone was like, oh, hi Barbie, hi Barbie. It was, it was this whole thing. So you had so many things you could build on or just connect everyone just tighter to something they're already connected on, like connected into. So it's, you know, following the trend, but also incorporating your own twist or your own values or your own feel to it. And, um, I wouldn't say there's a, there is a formula to the madness. It's more so just doing what you normally do, but tying it in with something that everyone already knows. So it's natural to you as the creator and it's natural to them as the person that's using it. I know that um, your effects are always super complicated. Oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Actually, there was an effect I was working on. I had slept on it, I dreamt on it, I woke up thinking about it. I worked on it for like a week and there was one thing that couldn't work on it. So I, I was overwhelmed. I said, you know what, I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna work on a very simple filter just to clear my head. Um, and that day I was doing Wordle. I was like, let me clear my head, let me do a bit of Wordle. And I was like, huh, I wonder if there was a Wordle filter, how that would turn out. I'll just use that to clear my head and work on this big project I wanna work on. And that Wordle filter was, that was like the first filter that really, really blew up. It uh, got a lot of traction. Um, 
publications reached out they wanted to have a word it was just an insane time and i was just sitting there thinking this cannot be the effect that just blew up <laughs> like i literally forgot that i made it and i was just getting all these notifications not as much as it tells but enough where i was like okay something's going on but um yeah you can't really know what's gonna like really get that you know that amount of traction so you shouldn't put unnecessary pressure on yourself or say oh because i work this hard i want this to happen so if it doesn't happen i'm gonna feel bad because you could spend two weeks and work on it and it really does well or you could spend an hour and it really does well so it's more so did you enjoy making it um did you say did you envision maybe one or two people your friends liked it my friends normally uh, are the first testers for mine so it's more so you can't put too much pressure on the numbers it's more so about the process you know trust the process and um yeah okay i like that fall in love with the process of creating effects on tiktok um jordan i have a question for you there are a bunch of effect creators watching this that i'm sure want to know do you have any secret tips and tricks for creating trending moments on tiktok for creating trending moments, I think I just have to piggyback a book of what Kasai said and being passionate about what you create. As cliche as this is going to sound, it is all about the journey and not the destination. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. I'll just apologize for that right now. Um, but <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, just really creating for yourself and being confident in your work. Um, I think that as we've all said, there's no secret formula, um, but the Effect House community is so rich in kind of resources um, and so many talented creators. Um, so really utilizing those resources um, and just staying confident in your work. With that being said, I think since there are so many talented creators, it can definitely be easy to start comparing yourself to others and kind of be really hard on yourself. Or even when you publish an effect, you may receive negative comments or you may see that it's not performing well or trending. Uh, so I think my best tip is kind of lean into the positivity and lean into the great resources that are provided um, and stay confident in the work that you create so you yourself are proud of what you've made. That was beautiful. Um, I think that Effect House creators are artists. And when you are an artist, um, you put a piece of yourself out there every day and it's a really vulnerable experience. Um, so I love that you can like look towards the positives, um, lean on the community. Uh, that's, that's something that's really special. Chantel, I have a question for you. Um, I, I want to know what your secret sauce is for creating effects. Um, I feel like it has something to do with planning, right? Don't you like to stay organized? Plan, plan and plan ahead. That is my biggest piece of advice. And I think Kasai touched on it earlier. Um, you know, stay in touch with the calendar. What is coming up? What big events are coming up? Um, is there any national holidays? Even if they're like country specific to your country that not everybody will celebrate, even better because you're getting an even smaller piece of that niche and everybody's gonna be using your effect because there's not gonna be tons and tons of effect creators. Not like Christmas when you know, there's thousands of effects. If you're creating effects just for your country's special event, even better. But yeah, I like to plan ahead. I had all my Christmas effects created in October. They were published and promoted in November and they're popping off in December. So <laughs> I definitely like to um, be at least a month in advance and also I think getting in there first is um, a really, a really important thing to do. So the idea on TikTok, I think, is trying to guess what people are going to be talking about in one to two months time. And if you're like me and you don't have a crystal ball, I do have a few tips on how you can try and predict what may be big in one to two months time. 
for example, you can go on Netflix and see what TV shows uh, will be coming out. Is there any sequels? Is there anything that's catching your eye? What you think? You know what? That could be a cool effect. And the same with the cinema. Is there any new movies coming out? Or, you know, is your artist dropping a new album soon? I think if you can capitalize and get in first on that trend in a thing, and on that trend in effect, do it and be the trend. Don't wait for the trend. You be the trend. You create that trend. That was amazing, Chantel. I've seen some Effect House creators um, start working with brands. I'm curious, um, for all of you here, have you guys worked with brands before? Uh, Kasai, do you want to start us off? I am, most definitely. Uh, yes, and it's an interesting experience because a lot of times, especially for me, I'm mostly just inside on my computer, just me, my computer in Effect House, just creating the effects, and you forget that you have <laughs> you have like eyes on you. So I'll be scrolling through my emails, seeing if there are anything that I missed, and I'll sometimes see, hey Kasai, we saw this effect, we thought it was really cool, could you do something similar for us? And initially I, you know, check the email, oh, this is legitimate. Wow, this is really cool. So you do like these kind of effects. And given that it's such a young space, it's, um, it's, just you know a further reminder that you are going in the right direction that people are seeing it people are interested people do think it's cool so yeah it's more so just um getting familiar with um you know the language and you know just how to communicate and um let them understand what you're doing on your side maybe your limitations uh like with size and all that stuff but it's 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 been true it's really been a remarkable experience the um, amount of companies I've been able to collaborate with uh, since joining Effect House. It's, it's, it's really been crazy. That's awesome. Chantel, do you have a similar story um, with creating uh, effects for brands? Yeah, so Jordan mentioned earlier there was a huge trend on TikTok of bracket effects where everyone was either using bracket effects or creating bracket effects. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna create my own bracket effects. And I started making uh, like a little mini series called British Brackets, which focused on British culture, British cuisine, what us Brits like to eat and drink. And it really took off and Netflix ended up noticing um, the bracket effects and got in touch and actually asked if I'd be willing to create a bracket effect for an up and coming project that they were working on. Obviously I said yes, <laughs> <laughs> and it was an absolute surreal experience. One of the best, amazing times. And I just kept pinching myself like, is this really Netflix? Like when they'd email, I'd be like, oh my God, <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> so yeah, it was absolutely amazing. Chantel, you keep trying to tell us that you're not a celebrity, but you know, that sounds like <laughs> celebrity well, you know. behavior right there. <laughs> and British, British Brackets, what a great name. Um, I love a lot of what you said there. It seems like, you know, as an Effect House creator, sometimes you're creating an effect for yourself. Maybe sometimes you're creating an effect for your friends, your family, people in your region. Uh, but sometimes you're creating effects and there are people watching you, like big brands, like Netflix. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, and also with the British brackets, I was getting a lot of British food companies messaging me saying, we liked that you included our food or drink and we'd like to send you um, a little gift. So I ended up with lots of crisps or chips as Americans call them and also a lot of pop or soda. So yeah, I was really happy. <laughs> Thank you for the translations because we had no <laughs> what we were talking about. I was like popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jordan, have you ever worked with a, a brand before on Effect House TikTok? Yeah, uh, so I've worked with brands in kind of a different capacity. So I was contracted by Amazon Prime Video to create an effect for one of their shows at the time, Paper Girls. Um, so I worked with the brand, um, but it lives as a community effect. So it's not necessarily or technically a branded effect, but a community effect that lives on my profile created for the brand. Um, so like you said, Miles, 
people are always kind of watching and I think that's true not just to see the types of effects that are trending and what kind of um, marketing materials they can produce but also who is creating those effects um, so it's definitely really cool to see that brands are kind of seeing this really new way to market and create but also seeing the creator behind it that's amazing and kasai i feel like uh you were gonna jump in there and and comment on something that jordan said oh you see in my mind i was stuck on the popcorn pop soda thing <laughs> 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 but yeah it it so just knowing that there are you know a set of eyes watching you sometimes that you may not be aware of it doesn't it shouldn't allow you to put you know unnecessary pressure on yourself because that sometimes happened to me where i was like oh how is this going to be perceived how will the design girls feel about how the how i use these colors does this complement well you know as i'm not that you know sometimes your cult your eyes aren't the same as like the like jordan has like a really good eye for design i'm not there yet so i was like ah uh, i gotta make sure but it's um you know stick with yourself if you know you tried your best um that that should be fine sometimes you'll get a comment saying hey if you try this or that that may look better or why don't you add this feature so there you'll get a lot of help from the tiktok community as i have gotten in a lot of my games where they're like we love it kasai can you add can you implement this feature can you add this and it'll be even better and i was like oh wow that's really good why didn't i think of that so i implemented it i updated it so it's more so not really putting too much pressure on yourself to perform your absolute best because a lot of times you will get help along the way through the TikTok community, through the Effect House community, and, you know, through your friends sometimes. So, you know, just enjoy the ride, you know? That's awesome. That was, cliche. Kasai... That was cliche too, Kasai. <laughs> uh, West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the West Coast and the East Coast clashing, clashing again. Um, so Jordan, you mentioned uh, community effects and branded effects. Uh, Kasai, I know that there are a lot of effect house creators who are probably just starting out who might not know the difference between the two. Uh, would you mind explaining to everyone here what the difference between a community effect and a branded effect is? Oh, uh, sure thing. So a community effect gets posted on a page. So my page, or even if Netflix uh, created a create an effect if it got posted on their page that's a community effect and the difference is it doesn't get the effect itself isn't promoted or pushed by tiktok it's solely based on the company or the person so i'll post my video saying hey guys i'm doing this this is my effect please see it but for branded effects um tiktok will have a little slot there in the effects panel and they'll do they'll do their part in promoting it and um it's more so for uh, more so for just companies to kind of get that additional push on their effects. All right, well, now we are down to our final question. Um, and so a question that I have for all of you is, what advice do you have for someone who is a new creator just now finding out about Effect House? Um, Chantel, do you want to start us off? Yeah, my biggest piece of advice is create, 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 and just keep creating. You're not going to be an amazing creator overnight. It takes time and as long as you keep creating, that is the main thing. You hear often the phrase quality over quantity, but when it comes to trying something new, I truly believe in quantity over quality and they don't have, your effects don't have to be perfect. As long as you're publishing and you're creating, you will learn so much just by doing that. Whether it be on Effect House, you know, you're learning different nodes and different visual scripting, or when you publish your effect for the first time, you will learn so much about promoting your effect and who is using your effect and what is working and what isn't working. So as long as you just keep creating and just keep pushing your effects out there. And also, I, I like a little bit of advice for the learning process. Definitely make use of the Effect House website because it is just like a treasure trove of tutorials and advice and feel free to download them tutorials and them templates and dig in and don't be afraid to make mistakes or do something wrong because 
at the end of the day, what is the worst that can happen, you know? Like, it doesn't work. Well, close it down and reopen it, start again. It's definitely not the end of the world. As long as you just keep trying, tinkering around, you'll get there eventually. And also, if you do get stuck, Discord, the Effect House Discord community is amazing. They are so helpful. Everyone is, I don't know if I'm just biased because I'm in there, but everybody just seems like the nicest people in the world. You know, I still ask for help today and I'm an ambassador and there's always people willing to help you out and give you advice. And it's like, everyone is on your side. Everyone is like a big family and it's so nice. So do not be afraid to ask for help, especially the Discord channel. That's awesome. Jordan, what do you think? What's uh, what's your advice to um, an Effect House creator just starting out? Yeah, I mean, like I mentioned, just create for yourself and reiterating what Chantal said is really utilize the resources. So I will always find myself in the Discord typing questions that I sometimes think are just like stupid, but then I'll find a whole thread about it and the answers to my problems. It's a really great resource to utilize. Um, there again are so many talented creators that are so just authentic and genuine and really want this community to grow and thrive. So really utilizing that and um, asking questions and not being afraid to, you know, message your fellow creators that are on the team. Okay, so we got asking questions. Don't be afraid to fail. We have uh, quantity over quality. Kasai, do you have anything to add um, for our advice for creators just starting out? Oh man, they gave a lot of good advice. <laughs> um, I just say not it's not as scary as it seems. Um, even as someone who came from a programming background, touching the nodes, I'm going from like typing everything out to now it's like connecting string. It's like, it can be intimidating, but Effect House has a wealth of resources um, for reference. Uh, the, first, the first effect I made was based on the randomizer template. I didn't know how Effect House worked or what these nodes did or the hierarchy panel or any of that. But um, just using that template, it really enabled me to create my first effect. And just having that out really piqued my curiosity to say, okay, so how does this work? So just going at it, uh, it's like riding a bike. I'm sure initially we're all scared of, you know, two wheels and some metal. But the, as soon as you approached it and you started, you know, started riding, you realize, hey, this isn't as intimidating as I first believed. Um, Leaning on to what uh, Chantel and Jordan are saying, it's so much, there is so much you can get from the Effect House Discord, the Effect House website. Um, there are a lot of tutorials, there are a lot of, uh, I guess, templates. I do a couple templates myself, and you can find a lot of other creators who make templates, and a lot of creators who will spend their time answering questions. So even if you're new and you're like, how do I open the application? I promise you, someone will be there and someone will say, hey, you got to click this button, the cool effect house icon, and you're like, thank you. So it's, you know, just approach it. Just take the chance, uh, create an effect. Don't be too hard on yourself and help is there. That's awesome. So to summarize what um, all of our creator panelists have said today, um, it seems like don't be afraid to create your first effect. I mean, who knows? You can make a trending effect in less than an hour. Well, that wraps up our session for today uh, with creating trending effects on TikTok. I'm your host, Miles Stevens, and uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next session, Effects 101 for Content Creators.
gente, tudo bem? Eu sou o Bruno, criei efeitos aqui no TikTok e hoje eu vou contar pra vocês um pouquinho da minha história com a Fact House, que é a plataforma de criação de efeitos do TikTok. Bora lá? Se você já usou algum efeito aqui no TikTok como batalha de comida, ranking de comida, ranking de comida de fim de ano e vários outros, provavelmente você já usou algum efeito meu. Mas como que eu cheguei até aqui? Bom, eu sempre fui muito curioso em tecnologia, e aí ali mais ou menos em 2022 abriu as inscrições para poder se aplicar e ser um criador de efeitos no TikTok. Eu não passei na primeira fase, não fui selecionado, mas aí eu sempre fui acompanhando, vendo o que as pessoas estavam criando, e logo mais ou menos entre janeiro e março, fui aprovado e comecei a criar os efeitos. Uma coisa é que eu ainda não tinha Macbook, o programa não tinha versão para Windows. Então, eu pedi ajuda para um professor que tinha Macbook, ele me emprestou um Mac Mini e eu fui começar a criar no computador dele. Era um desastre porque travava muito né, o computador, assim, não era tão bom, mas eu nunca desisti de criar. E desde que eu entrei no Effect House, eu fui para o Discord, que era o canal oficial que eles utilizam para a comunidade, sempre fui ajudando os outros, fui ajudado, fui construindo amigos, fui divulgando meu trabalho e assim vai. Participei do programa Pride Latam 2022, que foi um challenge para toda a América Latina, fui um dos ganhadores, e depois também o TikTok me chamou para fazer um vídeo lá na página do TikTok Masterclass sobre criação de efeitos. Gente, eu sou de um aqui na Zona Leste de São Paulo, que é bem humilde, quase nunca tinha tido a oportunidade de trabalhar com as empresas de tecnologia, então poder trabalhar com o TikTok, poder estar ali dentro, é, divulgando a plataforma, receber esse convite foi muito gratificante para mim e eu sou muito grato por isso. O tempo foi passando, fui criando mais efeitos, até que veio o convite para mim poder exibir o meu efeito lá no Rock in Rio de 2022, e eu fiquei super, super encantado com isso. Como eu falei, nunca tinha tido tantas oportunidades e fui pro Rock in Rio a primeira vez. Peguei tudo sozinho, fui, mas fui ver meu trabalho lá exposto. Esse reconhecimento fez com que cada vez mais eu criasse mais efeitos, que eu ficasse mais animado e poder ver aonde o meu trabalho poderia chegar. Então eu agradeço muito pela oportunidade. E nesse meio tempo também o time de Effect House me convidou para ser insider da plataforma, que era o novo programa de embaixadores, onde a gente podia testar o programa, dar feedbacks e muito mais. Eu fiquei muito honrado por ser um dos brasileiros insiders que estava ali e sempre contribuir da melhor forma possível, colocando perguntas, reportar bugs e muito mais. E hoje eu posso falar que eu sou muito feliz trabalhando com Effect House e TikTok. Tive a oportunidade de gravar dois vídeos pro YouTube deles, então o primeiro é um vídeo sobre Head Tracker e o segundo foi uma aula de 3D física para toda a comunidade brasileira. Tive a oportunidade de ser mentor também no programa de mentores e mentorados e também meu efeito foi destaque na Vidicom Brasil. Recebi uma outra oportunidade incrível para estar com vários creators na Vidicom em Los Angeles, mas infelizmente eu não consegui ir. Espero poder ir outro dia. E, e bom, para terminar esse vídeo, eu queria falar que hoje o Effect House, para mim, ele não é só a plataforma que eu criei efeitos no TikTok, ou não é só o servidor ali de Discord que eu participo, mas é quase como uma segunda família para mim, porque eu fiz muitos amigos por lá, tive várias oportunidades e eu sou muito grato por poder participar ali de todo esse ecossistema e fico muito feliz por isso. Queria dar a dica para você aí que tá pensando em criar efeitos, vai, faça seus efeitos, coloca no TikTok, faça vídeos divulgando e assim como eu, quem sabe um dia você pode estar tá aqui contando sua história do Effect House. E bom, gente, muito obrigado, essa foi um pouquinho da minha história, não esqueçam que a criatividade no Effect House, você pode ir além, você pode criar vários tipos de efeito com várias tecnologias e muito mais. Obrigado, e eu sou o Bruno. Não esqueçam de me seguir, arroba bruno.wx. Valeu! Hey creators, if you ever published a TikTok video or thought about it, this session is for you. These days, content creation is accessible to everyone. With our platform and simple creation tools, it is easy to become a storyteller, reaching a vast audiences with just the smartphone. You might think that creating content requires wearing lots of hats, writing, filming, editing, post-production. Maybe I should just go to film school to learn everything. Not to worry. It's super easy to make videos for TikTok. And as you create and edit content, effects are the content creator's best friend. 
Think of effects as post-production tools. All your production needs are covered, from green screens to costumes to makeup. You can do all with effects. In this session, we'll take you through all our best tips, tricks, and secrets for using effects in your content strategy. For the effect designers and developers watching, this session is for you too. Learning how creators find and use your effects will help you create effects that creators find useful and exciting. Inspiration. I like to use my effects to get inspired for the next video idea. We've all been there, staring at our screens, waiting for a spark of creativity. Effects can be that spark. Just take a look at the trendings tab. If you don't know where that is, it's okay. We'll get to that later. Remember creator Laura Guyon's girl dinner effect? It wasn't just a trend, it became a phenomenon. Celebrities, influencers, everyone tried their hands at it, showcasing their reactions and interpretation. And then there's the effect picks out my makeup challenge, turning the routine task of makeup into an exciting, unpredictable game. Many effects provide the inspiration for your entire video. Many of them walk you through the entire video narrative from the beginning, middle, and end. Start by asking what your girl dinner is and end by finding out and giving an awesome reaction. It's that easy. Boost your discoverability. Participating in global trends can help users find your videos. Putting your own spin on a popular trend is a great way to stand out. As an effect gains traction, so can your content using that effect. High quality visual effects. I mentioned effects as a post-production tool. They're really great for this. Think of TikTok effects as your personal VFX team. Always ready, always innovative. With them, even a simple video can feel like a blockbuster. Whether you're setting the mood, adding a touch of magic, or just giving your video that extra pop, effects are your best ally. Let's not forget the creators who won the behind the scenes challenge, who truly showcased their power of effects to enable high quality storytelling. Having fun. Creators always ask me what tips I have for how often I should post, what their content strategy should be. My recommendation, have fun. If you're having fun making content, your audience will notice and your videos might perform better too. Beyond all the tools and tactics, content creation is about joy. It's about the thrill of turning an idea into a visual story. And effects, they amplify that joy. They're not just tools, they're playgrounds. Dive in, play, experiment, and have fun. Okay, now let's talk about where you can find effects on TikTok. The first place to start is the For You feed. The For You feed is the heart of TikTok, showcasing a curated collection of videos tailored for you. Did you know that most effects get discovered right here? As you scroll through, you'll often come across videos using unique effects. If something catches your eye, tap and explore. The effect tray. If you haven't seen our effect tray on the TikTok camera, go check it out now. You can find it by going to the plus icon on your TikTok app and then tapping effects next to the record button. The first tab you see here is trending, where you can see some of the effects that are buzzing on TikTok right now. The trending tab gives you a glimpse of what the TikTok community is loving at the moment. The search bar. If you have a specific effect in mind, or if you're just in the mood to explore, the search bar is your best friend. Simply type in the keywords and voila! Request your own effects. Sometimes you might have a unique vision that requires a custom touch. Why not engage directly with an effect creator? Find the video, leave a comment, and express your ideas and collaborate. Additionally, the gigs channel on our Effect House Discord server is a fantastic place to request bespoke effects tailored to your needs. Let's dive into the last recommendation a little further. Working with an effect creator to make your own effect is a great way to reach new audiences and build your brand. Think about it, with one popular video, you can reach quite a few users. But with one popular effect, your effect could be used in thousands or even millions of videos, each reaching many, many users. It's an exponential opportunity for your account. Musicians, consumer brands, and influencers have all seen significant success with 
publishing effects to their profile made by an effect creator in the Effect House community. Keep in mind, if your effect gets popular, you'll also have a wide collection of user-generated content, also known as UGC, from creators around the world engaging with your content. Plus, you can promote your new effect with Spark Ads or promote top videos from other creators if you really want to increase its performance. In essence, a custom effect isn't merely a visual tool, it's a growth strategy. It intertwines community, creativity, and your brand, fostering an exponential growth and recognition. I can't wait to see what you make with TikTok effects. There's a whole world out there. For more creator tips, check out the TikTok University, our full course to get an expert education on all things TikTok. Bye. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next session. Inside tips from Effect House Ambassadors. Hey, what do you think? Oh, this is what? Oh, Pen in the Mill? Program, what? Show boys, I'm not. Propia, that's it? Tom Bond? Chita, your name did it, Peter, you thought you got it? Took she some shit, got it? Welcome to the Ambassadors Chat Session. I'm Vanessa, the APAC Community Lead. Today, we have a special session in store featuring some AR trailblazers, our very own ambassadors. These individuals are not only creators at Effect House, but also thought leaders in the dynamic world of AR. At Effect House, we're on a mission to make creativity universally accessible. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just stepping into the air realm, our platform is tailored for you. Today, we'll delve into how Effect House helped them reach a global community of millions, all the opportunities they've levered, and how this tool has helped them achieve their wildest dreams. Stay tuned as we uncover the insights and experiences of our ambassadors, offering a window into the forefront of AR innovation. Cal, also known as Game Plus 40, is known for his technical wizardry and creativity in AR. How are you doing today, Cal? I'm doing great. I'm doing great, Vanessa, and I uh, hope you are doing well as well. And hi, everybody! First question is, what technical tips can you offer to aspiring creators? And how do you navigate the challenge that comes your way? So when I first started off uh, with, uh, with an effect house, right? I remember I was kind of struggled in terms of how do I move this object from A to B? It took me three hours, right? It took me three hours to basically find an answer for this. And until I go through the Effect House learning page, right? Bit by bit and search and really learn out 
and try to understand just the basic visual scripting it brings your AR creation uh, level up because especially on AR gaming you want to do interaction with the user your, your effect needs to have uh, some some level of interaction and in order to do that you you really have to learn up the basic of visual scripting so especially when you are the beginner don't try to learn something that is too complex like take a game you know take a game and you want to develop the game and without knowing the basic because it's going to frustrate you so so learn the basic and then start from the basic and slowly increase some difficulty levels to it and that's where you start to learn about logic build the, this is the path i took right uh, from learning all those you have so much creativity in your work. How do you balance the technical skills with the creativity? So I find my inspiration on creativity by using new features. And when I mention new features, it's either a new feature being introduced by Effect House. If not, it's something that I have not used before, right? So once you have that now, I, I tend to increase a, a layer of difficulties to the effect that I do. That's how you learn slowly, progr uh, progressively, right? So, you introduce one thing, you don't know how you're going to execute that, right? And you tend to learn. That's where the technical bits come up. And I always have something that is kind of challenging. How do you achieve that, right? So, and I try to find an answer to that, like a problem solving. And that's how I basically balance uh, the creativity and the technical bits, right? And always challenge yourself on something new on the technical bit, right? And by doing that, you, you suddenly it opens up a lot of doors for different creativities. That's a really great insight, Cal. You keep challenging yourself and basically through incremental growth, you achieve sustainable growth. You've been in the platform for a while and you've published many, many effects. Have your effects ever granted you the opportunity to work with brands on TikTok? Yes, that's why I love Effect House. I've been doing uh, AR creations uh, for three years. But the time when I really monetize my skill is the time I spend with uh, Effect House. But I started to learn uh, the basic of uh, building a game effects, right? A game effects. And amazingly, after I learned for just a short while, the queries from the client started coming, right? And it just comes after I start to learn about the gaming, uh, game filter. That's why I, I keep doing uh, a lot of game effect. Not necessarily a lot of them are good, really. I do that more for learning purpose and make sure I understand the client brief correctly. So yeah, so I think so far within the past 12 months, I work with like five to 10 different clients on about what, 20 to 30 clients projects. Right, many of them are actually uh, repeat clients. Uh, they, they 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 keep coming back, uh, which which I'm glad. Now, if you want to really learn uh, to monetize your skill, right, I think you you have to learn about gaming and different interaction, the visual scripting, right. Without that, uh, I I don't think you can uh, you you can have you can monetize that easily, right. So there is no way around visual scripting, that's what you're saying. There's no way around visual scripting. Like, like the past, this is give a past 10 uh, uh, client brief that I received. 9 out of 10, they are all gaming related. They are all games, right? So, and uh, I have never seen a brief that say I want to do a randomizer or do a, do a face sticker. That's, that's for sure, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, so, so it's, it's all about gaming. It's all about different interactions. Thank you so much for your time today. And we loved all those answers. Thank you for giving all those tips for the future generation of AR creators. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Hi, everyone. I'm Phil Ananda, and I'm Effect House Community Manager for Europe. Today, I'm joined by one of our most popular AR creator based in the UK, Crystal. You might know her better by her TikTok handle at Karma is my dog. Hi, Crystal. How's it going? Hi. Thank you for inviting me. I'm I'm good. Thank you. You might know me by some of my effects such as, such as the flower draw and daisy draw effect, which allows you to draw different patterns on your uh, phone using the effect. I've been using the Effect House for a year and a half, and I've enjoyed it so much. And I thank you for inviting me today. Of course, with pleasure. So um, I am super curious about your creative processes. Like, how do you come up with all of these amazing AR effect ideas? Or 
is there any project that you can share with us where it completely blew up on TikTok and went viral? It's so, so many ways that I stay creative and coming up with my ideas using Pinterest, also looking at conversations online and also the Effect House live is amazing. I get so many ideas watching the tutorials and there's so many creators who do their own tutorials. So an example of when I use uh, some ideas to make an effect go viral was when I looked at some conversations on TikTok about how people f felt about their phone. Uh, I saw them complaining about be the battery being on 1% and also people complaining about uh, not having storage on their phone. And so I used these conversations to come up with an effect and I called it the brain capacity and I made it look like the storage on your phone and looked online for more conversations about what Gen Z and millennials complain about in general about life. Um, so things like uh, pro procrastinating, um, being bored, watching Netflix on repeat and things like that. And then I like racked up three million views on that video and there were so many like big reactions to it. People were like, oh my gosh, it's like you know me. And so it was really funny to see how all the research of looking online and and well, looking on TikTok really and finding how people feel about things and matching that to how people felt at the moment when they were using the effect. It was just phenomenal. That's incredibly cool. Inspirations can come from anywhere, your For You page or from other AR creators. Be sure to follow them. Don't be afraid to reach out to them. So when it comes to staying fresh and um, facing these inevitable creative blocks, what are your tips and tricks? Yes, I do have creative blocks. And the way I get around that is when I'm feeling really creative, I write lists of different ideas. So I have a list on Notion, I have lists on my notes. Um, so I have different places I can dig out these ideas that I've noted down. So when I do have a creative block, I go back to them and I kind of separate them into easy, medium, hard. So the easy ones will be ones I have the knowledge to build and then the harder ones or medium ones will be ones that I need to learn a bit more about the like programming or nodes um, or design to achieve so um, I will pick one of those and develop a little project and it's been really good for me because it means I'm never I, I there's a way, way around it so I'm not stuck in a loop love those tips if you were to give a piece of advice to someone who just started their journey as an ar creator what would that advice be there's some very generous people in the community that would just be like point you in the right direction and the, there's someone um that will know something you're struggling with or have the same struggle and then i think the other thing is not to be afraid to post uh, or be afraid of low views or getting started i mean some people get started and they get loads of views and then some people it takes a bit of a journey to find their audience or for the audience to find them so see it as a progression in uh, your journey uh, when you post something if, it, if you get low views try again my other effect um, it didn't go viral straight away i had to post a second time and then it went viral um, but it, it take it just I feel it takes some courage to do that but it's worth it and by the end of the day what matters the most is that you have fun and always be an adventurous and curious learner is there a special moment or a special story where your effect um, made a huge impact on your audience or a specific person in general yeah I can think of a time it was actually quite recent uh, there was a effect I created called How Will This Year End and it was a scratch card effect. I actually used some new features in Effect House where um, there was a scratch card template and I really wanted to try it. I've seen other creators try it and I thought I'll come up with this end of year effect. Uh, you, I used Canva to actually design it but then it started to go viral actually and then I was scrolling and I saw this 
girl crying and I, I I was like okay I read her story and it was really moving she um posted that she'd used the effect and she had a family member who passed away who was musical and she was thinking about starting to play a new instrument and the effect landed on an option of trying something new trying a new instrument and she just burst into tears and it just made me realize you never know how people will react to it and it, for her it was like a moment that she felt confident to make that decision for herself it was something she felt was confirmation of what she wanted to do and needed the courage to do and i, I was just baffled because this is a just this is a randomizer effect and it, it's how it has an effect on people seeing that story it just made me think i'm gonna you know not be as nervous sometimes if i'm trying something new because um sometimes it is quite personal but actually it's worth trying it out because you 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 get a reaction that sometimes you weren't expecting so yeah I, that really touched me I, I was really glad that i i made it and um, it resonated with people thank you so much for sharing such a heartwarming story crystal I think it just goes to show how our work can impact so many people. I want to know how has being an Effect House ambassador have shaped your journey as an AR creator? It's been amazing actually. It's been transformative for me as a person. I feel like I've been able to unleash my creativity in a way that I never even imagined. And the journey that Effect House has taken me on um, and it has been phenomenal. I've been able to connect with creators from all over the world, um, which is like incredible. And there's just so much support actually. So I just feel like I've learned so many different perspectives about um, how to create different um, effects and learned so many different processes. And I'm learning to adapt um, to develop my own processes, but that's only been because I've been part of this community and an ambassador as well has op it's opened up more opportunities. So yeah, it's, it's been amazing. I totally really, really encourage anyone who's thinking about joining or not sure about joining to join because it is a really pl good place to grow in your creativity and explore. And there's such a platform for you to be who you want to be in this community. Thank you so much, Crystal, for sharing and being such an inspiration. We're so honored to be a part of your journey as well. I just really hope it inspires more people to join Effect House because it's been a great place to be. And um, yeah, thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Oi pessoal, é a Vitória, Community Manager do Effect House para a região latino-americana e hoje a gente está aqui com a nossa embaixadora, Sara Fontinelli. Oi, Sá! Oi, pessoal! Eu sou a Sara Fontinelli, desenvolvedora de realidade aumentada e criadora da Effect House há alguns anos aí. É, estou extremamente honrada de poder estar participando dessa entrevista com a Vitória para o nosso Open House. Sara, como criadora de realidade aumentada e experiente, Quais foram os desafios que você passou durante essa sua trajetória? Então, quando eu comecei a criar efeitos, eu ainda era estudante, eu estava morando na Argentina e eu cursava medicina lá. Então, foi um momento um pouco confuso para mim, é, porque eu vi essa paixão crescendo cada vez mais, essa vontade de criar mas eu ainda não conhecia nada sobre o mercado, eu não sabia que isso poderia ser uma profissão. Então eu enfrentei alguns dilemas aí, eu tive alguns momentos é, onde eu queria desistir, onde eu quis abandonar tudo e focar nos meus estudos, mas depois de um tempo eu comecei a ver que eu estava atraindo clientes, é, que as pessoas estavam se identificando com as minhas criações, que né, eu estava tendo alguns destaques, como aparecer em alguns blogs de realidade aumentada, como o Lens List. E logo depois disso, eu acabei sendo contratada por uma empresa é, de realidade aumentada aqui do Brasil. E isso foi um divisor de águas, assim, para mim. É, eu realmente me entendi como uma mente criativa. Eu entendi que eu tinha que fazer aquilo para eu ser feliz, era a minha paixão, era o que eu queria fazer. E foi quando eu decidi me tornar criadora full-time. 
É, então, essa jornada foi extremamente importante para mim. Eu acredito muito na minha paixão, eu acredito muito no meu objetivo. Então, eu acho que eu estou no caminho certo de onde eu ainda quero chegar. Eu acho muito legal isso de ver que cada pessoa vem de um background totalmente diferente e acaba encontrando uma nova paixão na realidade aumentada. Com certeza. É, falando sobre essa parte técnica, Sá, que você destacou, quais são as ferramentas do Effect House que te permitem com que, é, que você crie esses efeitos criativos, inovadores? Então, uma das ferramentas que eu mais gostei quando lançou foi o Face Occlusion. É, como eu crio maquiagens, né? Para mim é super importante a gente ter um acabamento que pareça mais realista. Então, é muito legal você ter ali uma função que permite, né? Esconder pedaços da maquiagem onde a gente tem algum objeto na frente do rosto. Eu acho que isso foi um mega diferencial da Effect House. Eu acho que isso eleva muito mais os nossos efeitos, principalmente né, os efeitos de rosto. E eu uso bastante essa ferramenta. Mas além dela, também tem a biblioteca, que é uma ferramenta que eu gosto muito. Eu acho que a biblioteca do Effect House ela é extremamente rica. A gente tem ali diversos itens, além de objetos 3D, né? Então, eu adoro navegar pela biblioteca, é, descobrir novos itens, novos assets que são adicionados por lá. E também me ajuda muito no processo criativo. Quando eu estou um pouco empacada, um pouco travada em algum projeto, eu sempre dou ali uma olhadinha na biblioteca e eu acabo encontrando alguma coisa ali que vai me ajudar ou que vai dar um toque especial no meu efeito. E, Sá, falando que você é uma embaixadora do Effect House e tudo mais... Você poderia destacar alguma, é, alguma experiência que o Effect House tenha te proporcionado para que você é, possa aprimorar a sua carreira e esse seu sucesso na criação de efeitos? Com certeza. Teve um programa do Effect House que foi muito importante para mim, que eu levo com muito carinho, que foi o programa de mentores e mentorados, onde eu participei como mentora. E eu sou muito apaixonada pela área da educação. Eu gosto muito de falar, eu gosto muito de contribuir. Então, quando eu fui convidada, eu fiquei extremamente honrada. É, eu me senti muito capaz, eu me senti muito realizada de poder estar ali realmente auxiliando parte da comunidade, ajudando né, um pouquinho mais a, a, a os nossos criadores e contribuindo mais com a Effect House. Então, foi um momento muito legal para mim. Eu adorei participar desse programa. Sim. Então, Sá, muito obrigada por compartilhar a sua história com o Effect House para gente. Pessoal, vamos seguir lá a Sara para ver o perfil dela, ver todos os efeitos, usarem. E muito obrigada! Olá a todos e a todas, que tal? Sou Fran, Community Lead de Effect House, e hoje tenho um convidado muito, muito especial. É amado e aclamado por la comunidad hispanohablante y latinoamericana, pero también a nivel mundial. Hoy tengo conmigo a Jesus desde México. Jesus, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? Hola, hola, Fran. Estoy muy bien. Espero que tú también. Estoy muy emocionado de estar aquí contigo y con la gente que nos está viendo, compartiendo un poco de, de mi conocimiento acerca de Effect House. Para los que no me conocen, soy Jesus. Soy creador de efectos en TikTok a través de Effect House. También soy embajador. Soy de México y probablemente conozcan algunos de mis efectos más populares, como lo son el, el efecto de Loop Me, en el que toda la gente se, se iba cayendo hacia adelante. También está por ahí el, el efecto de Shakira Bizarrap eh, y uno de los más recientes, que es un minijuego de Eclipse. Son algunos de mis efectos más populares que quizá conozcan y pues aquí estamos para compartir un poco de, de consejos y un poco de conocimiento para creadores y futuros creadores que, se estén, que estén comenzando en este mundo de, de los efectos de realidad aumentada a través de Effect House. Exacto. Eh, Jesús va a compartir muchísimos tips y muchísimos consejos, así que asegurarse de que tenéis una libretita o algo cerca porque hay que tomar apuntes hoy. Eh, y como ha dicho él, para quien no lo conozcáis, Jesús es una superestrella no únicamente de la creación de efectos, pero también en cuanto a la creación de contenido. Jesus tiene más, no sé si me equivoco, más de 2,8 millones de seguidores en TikTok. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo reaccionas al saber que tienes tantos seguidores que te siguen y que, y que usan tus efectos? ¿Qué se siente? La verdad para mí es una locura. Sinceramente no es algo que yo me esperaba crecer de, de esa manera. 
pero realmente me emociona saber que hay mucha gente interesada en mi contenido, principalmente en los efectos que creo, y saber que a la gente le gusta lo que hago, eso a mí realmente me hace muy feliz. Jesús, eres el rey de la creación de contenido a la hora de promover y promocionar tus efectos. Tu edición, impecable, muy sharp, muy rápido. Eh, muchos creadores seguramente se preguntarán ¿qué, es, qué técnicas o qué, cuál es tu estrategia a la hora de crear estos vídeos para promocionar tus efectos y que lleguen pues, a, a una audiencia nueva o a tus seguidores? Esta es una pregunta muy interesante y creo que es muy importante también porque no es importante solo el hecho de crear efectos, sino también saber cómo promocionarlos y saber cómo hacer que esos efectos lleguen a la gente. Y al menos un, uno de los métodos que yo utilizo es el promocionarlos a través de, de la misma plataforma de TikTok en videos, ya que la plataforma de TikTok es una red social que puede llegar a millones de personas si, si sabes de qué manera crear el contenido. Entonces, uno de los consejos más grandes que te puedo dar es que pierdas el miedo a, a ponerte frente a una cámara y a grabarte a ti mismo, porque al menos a mí fue algo que, que me hizo eh, ir en su vida en cuestión de los números de mis efectos, porque pude llegar a más gente a través de ellos. Y mis consejos en cuanto a la edición de, de videos es que lo hagas de una manera muy creativa, que, que seas muy auténtico al momento de, de hablar tú mismo, que seas muy natural, que la parte de la edición es algo muy importante, que la edición sea algo en lo que puedas captar la atención de, de la gente, porque la gente muy fácilmente por, pierde la atención, entonces tienes que meter una parte de la edición que, que logre atrapar a la gente a seguir viendo el video, a, a verlo hasta el final y, e incitar a la gente también a utilizar tus efectos para que de esa manera llegue a mucha más gente. Exacto, y algo que sueles siempre decir en tus vídeos, que creo que es lo que más engancha a la gente eh, tu, eh, cuando ven tu, todos los vídeos que publicas, es el hagámoslo. Cada vez que eh, empiezas el vídeo con una pregunta o leyendo un comentario y siempre dices hagámoslo, eh, ya te mantiene enganchado a, a ver vale, cómo vas a hacer el, el efecto y a ver el resultado final. Jesús, eres un creador de efectos increíble, una superestrella de Effect House, pero también como creador de contenido en TikTok lo estás petando y lo podemos ver a día de hoy en tu cuenta. Eh, pero queremos saber, ¿cuál es tu objetivo final con Effect House y con TikTok en general? ¿Qué es lo que te gustaría llegar a hacer en un futuro? ¿Inspirar a la comunidad? ¿Seguir creando efectos y entretener a la gente? Cuéntanos, ¿qué te gustaría hacer? Sí, tengo en mente un objetivo final que me gustaría lograr con, con Effect House y con los efectos, aunque también me gustaría compartirles primero mi objetivo que estoy tratando de, de lograr actualmente, el cual es lograr causar un impacto positivo en las personas que utilizan mis efectos, ya que pues, se puede llegar a miles de personas, a millones de personas, por lo cual es una buena oportunidad de, de causar una emoción positiva, un impacto positivo en la gente y es una gran herramienta con lo que se puede lograr todo esto. Y más adelante, eh, en cuanto a mis objetivos a futuro, me gustaría eh, ser una inspiración para futuros creadores en cuanto a crear efectos, en cuanto a, a tips creativos. Me gustaría plasmar mi mi conocimiento a través de tutoriales, a través de videos en los que yo pueda ayudar a la gente a comenzar en todo este camino de, de la creación de efectos. Muchísimas gracias a todos y a todas por estar aquí. Espero que hayas tomado notas y especialmente muchas gracias, Jesus, por tomar tu tiempo y contar todos estos secretos. Para mí ha sido un gusto el haber estado aquí compartiendo algunos de mis tips y de mis consejos que espero que a toda la gente que está viendo esto les sirva de inspiración y que puedan seguir en este camino de creación de efectos de una manera más efectiva. Muchísimas gracias, nos vemos pronto. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. A big thank you to our ambassadors for sharing the expertise and inspiring the Effect House community. Your creativity not only dazzles, but also sets the standard for the limitless of possibilities within our platform. To our audience, whether you're an experienced creator or just beginning, Effect House is your canvas. Remember, everyone can create on Effect House. Stay inspired, stay creative, and until next time, keep pushing the boundaries of creation with the Fight House. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next session. Succeeding with TikTok effects for brands.
Hi, I'm Sigraf, but you can call me Sitan, and there is my if house story. I started making filters years and the cut I go and my first month was crazy. I post my first filter and two days later it went a viral in France. I participate in um if it's house contents, le palog monté deux. And guess what? Less than two weeks, I found myself into an event where my filter was shocked. Black news, I lost, but my filter was shocked. After this event, I imagine breaking records. I made other filters participate in more content, and guess what? I lost, and my filter, well, didn't work. So I started deep in my knowledge, creating test filters. From there, I made filter like Fanta Disney. My oracular, which worked pretty well, and I even got my first filter of the week. Two months later, I made a filter for one of my favorite French UI designer. Then I participated to the first Effect House Europe Agaton in Paris. And guess what? I win. Oh yes, and I also win the Effect House Oil the Challenge with the same filter. Did you remember when I told you that my filters didn't work? The gag is, they work. Move after. So please, don't delete your filters. I start 23 super optimistic. All I was learning and then I made a filter named What is your type of beauty? It was used by a thousand of people. It's become one of the filter of the month, published on Effect House Instagram. And I become and TikTok Effect House ambassador. I made several filters for Cote Soleil, one of the largest shopping center in Paris. I win. Let's work a challenge with my filter, try not to laugh. I partner with with TikTok friends for the hashtag Apple avec TikTok. I was one of the winners for the Fashion Moth Challenge with my feature Arcade Glam. Participate in the first Effect House Solange Rose in Paris, which was super fun. I won the Alessia Imagination Challenge in the green screen category with my filter custom gallery which currently has over 2 million videos but most of all on October 15, 2023 I received my first transfer from the Effect House Curator Rewards Program and there you have it that is my story with Effect House so far <laughs>
And why should brands think about effects in addition to all the other types of campaigns that they're running, like video ads, organic content, stuff like that? I love effects as a brand advertising tool and as creative enhancement. So with effects, you can get a ton of UGC from creators around the world making videos that include your branding, your product messaging, and effects often have compounding reach, meaning one effect can lead to many videos, and many of those videos can receive many views on our platform. I'll also add that brands appreciate the creative consistency that it brings throughout their campaigns. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, earlier today at Open House, we announced that effects on TikTok have been viewed more than 10 trillion times. Oh, wow. Um, and yeah, many creators that I work with actually have created effects that have been viewed over 1 billion times. So you mentioned branded effects. Uh, what is that? How is it different from effects that anyone can make? Totally. So these are our commercial effects. They're really developed specifically with advertisers in mind to enable them to achieve deeper engagement with users in a more interactive and natural way, ultimately boosting their brand buzz. So with a branded effect, we take care of most of the heavy lifting. So we'll help with ideation, production, testing, and branded effects can also have call to action links on the effect page. We help curate the effect page and pin those preferred videos to the top for you. We also have a few traffic options like promoting your effect in the trending tab of the effect track. So there, there's also a content safety aspect to it as well, right? Yes, absolutely. So we actually offer the highest degree of content safety with our effect house made branded effects. After an effect is produced and submitted as a branded effect, it will go through four steps of review, including performance, content safety, ad policy, and so forth. And I'm happy to say that we've seen zero online issues since launching our new four-step authentication process. So can anybody make a branded effect or do brands have to work with one of our uh, preferred vendors? Well, I'm so glad you asked. We're excited to share with you all some news. Brands can now work with any internal or external designer to create and submit branded effects in Effect House, and that starts today. It's super exciting. So this means if a brand wants to work with any TikTok creator, or if they have a designer who internally is on their team, they want them to make the branded effect, uh, they can do that now. I, I think this is probably the number one request for branded effects definitely amongst our creators, but um, also a lot of brands are interested in this as well. So I think a lot of people are gonna be really excited about this. Yes, now creating branded effects is very similar to how creators nowadays create community effects, but with all those other goodies that I mentioned earlier, such as branded safety review and curated effect pages. Greg, you've been working on Effect House since it started, right? So I wanted to ask you to share some of your insider knowledge here. What kinds of features do you think brands should take a look at when they're coming up with their branded effects? Well, I'm glad that you asked. Uh, Effect House has hundreds of features, but when we work with brands, we want to keep it really simple. So we break uh, branded effects down into different formats. So these include try-on, such as makeup, beauty try-on, um, 3D headwear, face, such as face mask, face object, uh, character transformations. Body, so we have some really cool body features, including body outline, which can make some really dynamic effects. Um, and something called 3D character avatar, where I basically uh, replace the user's body with a full 3D character. Animals, so we actually do have features that work on cats and dogs. Games, I, I'm sure you've seen uh, interactive games all over TikTok, uh, yes. super popular with our users and also with brands. World AR, so that's uh, sky segmentation, ground segmentation, basically replacing the world of the user with the world of the brand. And then finally we have atmosphere. So foreground elements, background elements, uh, post-processing effects, color filters, all that stuff. So it's my turn to ask for your expertise. Um, I was hoping you could share with us some examples of really high-performing campaigns um, and great creative for branded effect campaigns that you've seen in the past. Yes, we've actually picked a few great examples from our past campaigns that were launched by our advertisers with really great creatives. So let's take a look. Ketchup Tournament from Heinz is a great example utilizing the quiz feature to encourage users to choose their preferred food to top with ketchup. Awake the Dragon is a great example utilizing 3D headwear, which is the dragon in this case, coupled with triggers, so opening your mouth to eat the Takis or breathe fire. With Mira Mia Via, they went with a snapshot feature. Each time creators pose according to the hint outline, they trigger a photo taken and then the snapshots display all together as a beautiful collage photo album at the end. Then we have the Standard Bank Youth Creative. It utilizes the background and foreground elements really well. With the Gucci Flora Creative, creators can choose 
the front-facing camera to experience 3D face avatar with three choices. When using rear camera, starting with an image of the product, an animated view will gradually unfold. This campaign from Netflix is a perfect example of atmospheric effects. The foreground elements imitate the camera interface and a creepy face from the show Luther, The Fallen Sun, will suddenly show up behind the user with thrilling sound effects. I, I love all of them. Let's get a little bit into the details of the campaign setup. Once the brand has created a branded effect, uh, what are some traffic solutions that you would recommend to maximize the impact of their branded effect campaign? So our most recommended solution is actually to use branded effect with a branded mission campaign. So if you recall earlier, I mentioned the benefits of effects as a UGC driver and the compounding reach. Well, branded mission essentially takes this to a whole new level. It's an industry first ad solution that enables advertisers to crowdsource authentic content from creators on TikTok and to do so at scale. So with a single mission brief, advertisers can essentially execute their own casting call and crowdsource authentic content from diverse creators, really letting the creators work their magic and creating using your branded effect and really tapping into our pool of eligible creators. So ultimately garnering that massive engagement across our platform. Once the creator is developed using your branded effect, that content is then posted live on our platform and advertisers then have the ability to transform those top performing pieces of content into ads. So as you can tell, these, uh, these two products, branded effect, branded mission, really work quite seamlessly together, um, elevating the, the impact. Okay, the, the brand asks creators to make videos using their branded effect and those creators are incentivized to use the effect because the winning video creators will receive a cash payout. And then the brand gets a selection of high-performing videos that they can turn into TikTok ads. Exactly, and it works too. We've seen brand admission itself drive double-digit growth in terms of brand lift, and we found that when you couple the mission with the branded effect, it helps increase median ad recall by 9% and median favorability by 14% in brand lift studies. Yeah, and a lot of our open house sessions, we've talked about how TikTok creators love effects because it gives them ideas and inspiration of what videos to make. Um, and it turns out that this really helps for brand admission campaigns too. Yes, and it ensures that all of the videos created for the mission include the right brand messaging. Okay, Shana, well, we have covered so much here. Uh, thank you so much for your time. And I'm sure the question on everyone's mind is how can we get started? Yes, absolutely. We'll be sharing a link to an interest form if your brand is interested in discussing a branded effect or a branded mission. So keep an eye out for an email from us as well. Branded effects and branded missions are purchased through our TikTok for Business team and we're ready to help you navigate this world. Yeah, and for all the creators watching, since you can now all produce branded effects, please feel free to mention this to clients and potential partners who you're working with. We're hoping that this will open a lot of new doors. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next session. Fireside Chat, Pluto TV, Driving Impact with Branded Effects. Launching a new program where you can get paid to make effects called Effect Creator Rewards. They're giving up to six million dollars to effect creators. The reach of my effects has been absolutely wild. They've been viewed over 24 billion times and used in over 21 million videos. My name's Oli Tyler and I've been an effects house creator for over one year. I love making effects and interacting with creators from all around the world who use them in TikTok videos, sell stories and make people laugh. I'm really excited that now I'm be able to even monetize my effects with direct payments from TikTok. TikTok ha lanzado su nuevo programa en el que puedes cobrar por crear efectos. Se llama Effect Creator Rewards. Ofrece hasta 6 millones de dólares a los creadores de efectos. Me llamo Mark. Soy creador de Effect House desde hace más de un año. Creo que es muy divertido crear efectos e interactuar con creadores de todo el mundo que los utilizan en sus vídeos de TikTok para contar historias y hacer rir a la gente. El alcance de mis efectos ha sido realmente notable e increíble. Mis efectos han sido vistos más de 8.000 millones de veces y utilizados en más de 17 millones de vídeos. Estoy muy emocionado de que ahora también voy a poder ser capaz de monetizar mis efectos con pagos directos de TikTok.
We are so excited to have you here today, Alyssa. May I ask you to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm Alyssa Gibbs. I'm the director of social media for Pluto TV, um, which is the leading free streaming television service. It's got thousands of movies and shows, and it's available to download on any of your favorite devices. So um, I'm super excited to be here to talk about the TikTok brand admission. Thank you, Alyssa, for that intro. I am the global product marketing lead for Brand Admission and Branded Effect. And we're also joined by Jasmine from our Creative Labs team, who also worked on the campaign as well. I'd love to first start out with a quick overview of what Brand Admission with Branded Effect is, for anyone who doesn't know. So Brand Admission is our creative collaboration tool at scale. Brands are given the opportunity to tap into our creator community to crowdsource diverse content. So they put out their brief or mission, if you will. Those creators then develop their content against that brief, and they have the opportunity to tap into their favorites after testing them on our platform and turn them into ads. And Branded Effect, this really serves as that creative element throughout the mission or throughout the ads, really allowing that consistency for the brands and for creators throughout the entire campaign. So Pluto TV chose TikTok as the platform to promote its popcorn summer movies. Let's take a look at the results of the campaign. So what Pluto TV decided to do for our brand admission with Branded Effect revolved around one of our tentpole campaigns, like you said, Popcorn Summer Movies. And that campaign really focused in on all of the major titles that we have available on Pluto TV throughout the summer months. Um, and so with that, we ended up developing an effect called the Pluto TV's Casting Call, um, which is sort of a quiz format that users would answer by tilting their heads left or right to make a decision. They were given a series of iconic movie scenarios um, and had to make a choice for each. So for instance, your cruise ship is sinking, do you A, share your flotation device, or B, let your new BF drown? <laughs> um, you could probably guess what movie that is. And depending on their answers to these different iconic scenarios, they would then be cast as either the hero, the villain, the love interest, or um, the best friend in a uh, different genre of movie, right? So then at the end, they would be transformed into a movie poster, and there were four different um, movie posters for those specific genres. So in the end, your results would be something like, you've been cast as the hero in an action movie or, or the love interest in a rom-com. The major headline for us at the end of this brand admission was that in all of 2022, last year, we hired a total of 51 creators. And in just six days of the brand admission, we saw 500 creator videos rolling in touting Pluto TV. Wow. Yeah, so it was pretty incredible. Um, with that, we saw a 10.2% engagement rate, a 10.3% lift in ad recall and almost 60 million video views. We were so excited about the results uh, that we're actually doing another brand admission that starts today. So go check it out. Wow, that is very impressive. Thank you so much for sharing those results with us. Can you and Jasmine now walk us through how you brought this branded effect to life as a part of this brand admission BE campaign? Absolutely, so TikTok was amazing. This team is incredible to work with through the entire production process. Um, from day one, they helped us brainstorm what the overall concept was gonna be, and then helped us refine the concept all the way until launch day. Um, and as you can imagine, there were many iterations of the effect, um, but we were lucky enough to work with This Is Tommy, who is a agency and a TikTok partner who are really experts in building these effects. So my role as a Creative Lab member is to partner with people like Alyssa and Pluto and come up with creative ideas that are going to resonate with the platform, but also deliver on our KPIs that we have with our partners. So we ideated a bunch and we used some of our best practices like personality quizzes, gamified effects, and combined three ideas that we all really loved to create one super idea that would get the results that we wanted. That's great. Anything that you liked specifically? Working with TikTok, Tommy, they were amazing. And um, Tommy was super nimble and flexible and gracious in the many iterations that we went through of the effect. Um, they were able to whip up just about anything that we requested super quickly. Um, and were really helpful and dedicated to making this something that was gonna be really special and shareable. On the TikTok end, um, what I loved was when we saw the creator videos rolling in, um, you were able to see which videos were the top performers. So it wasn't just all about followers, it really gave a chance to all creators to make something worthwhile and you can see what was kind of taking off organically. 
Um, and from there, that really helped us in the decision-making process. So let's dive into the idea for this project. How did that concept come about? When coming up with the effect, um, I ran into the hurdle that I think most brands face with these types of buys, which I think you touched on earlier, of making it brand forward, hitting all your KPIs, making sure the logos are in the right place and all that. Um, while simultaneously making it very audience forward. So mm -hmm. I kept asking myself over and over again, would I use this effect? Would I actually take a video and post it and yeah. for all my friends to see? Um, so I think that's that was super important. Um, and one of the ideas that, that uh, Creative Labs brought to us was the BuzzFeed style quiz, um, which my friends and I could never resist, you know, <laughs> find out what kind of bread you are or something. <laughs> um, and you wanted everybody to know like, oh my gosh, I'm the multigrain or I'm the white bread or the whatever it is. Um, so we wanted, we wanted that to be part of it and then also have a really fun payoff at the end. So um, that's where the movie poster portion of it came in. Um, we thought if we, you saw your friend as the hero in an action movie on the poster, that hopefully you would want to see what you would look like as the uh, villain of a horror movie on a poster, right? Yeah. What Alyssa is talking about here is really at the heart of all of our creative ideation, which is creating something that our community is going to want to use and to post and most importantly, make their own, which fuels our content creation cycle on TikTok, one of our superpowers here. Um, we also had a unique task with this campaign, which was uh, not mentioning film titles themselves. This was more of a genre play. Uh, and with every task, there's a great solution. So the fun thing that we got to do here is play with the things that people love about these movies. So we had those different prompts, the boulder running down, the yacht sinking, whatever it might be, get people really engaged with that. And then I think the greatest part of this is then letting people be transformed in the end into the poster. So now people can use it multiple times, change their scenarios, see what they would do differently. And they have a personal investment in posting it and engaging with the community on the platform. They wanna show people, look, this is what I am. They wanna post their video themselves and they want to engage with other people's content. What do you think of having your branded effects amplified through creator branded content tools like Branded Mission? Yeah, so having the effect uh, makes it so creators and non-creators can create videos um, that have more structure and more of a template to work within, right? So having an open-ended prompt always invites who knows what. So uh, it can be risky from both a brand perspective and a legal perspective. Um, particularly when it goes out to such a wide array of creators uh, on a platform without a pre-selected process. Uh, the effect definitely lets you get your point across um, while having a little bit more control using a pre-produced creative. So the beauty of the brand admission is that it casts a wide but also very focused net so that interested creators are given the opportunity to participate. Um, you are both discovering and creating brand advocates who have a vested interest in creating a quality piece of content for your brand. Yeah. Um, and even for the creators not selected, this is a bonus, uh, their video still goes public. So on top of the paid efforts, you're still getting that organic reach. And uh, one of the videos, uh, we didn't select it, but it still reached 10 million people um, just completely organically. Wow, that is amazing. Do you have any tips for brands who may be interested in using branded effects for their own campaigns? Yeah, I think just kind of uh, repeating what I said earlier about keeping the audience at the forefront of your mind. Again, I live and breathe marketing Pluto TV, so um, it's easy to get lost in the logos, the taglines of it all. Um, but at the end of the day, the effect is really there to entertain your audience. So you wanna make something that the audience cannot resist but sharing with their friends, but trying out. So I think that's, that's probably the biggest thing to keep in mind. And Jasmine, we have a lot of creators who are watching this session today. Do you have any tips for any of these creators who are you know, developing effects for brands and what are the best ways that they can get discovered by brands today? Well, first of all, I want to say that I'm also always learning from the incredible talented effects creators that we have. They're making some of the best content on the platform. Um, but in terms of working with brands, I think my number one tip would be to remember that you're ultimately creating something for the TikTok community. You can make an effect that on paper delivers on all the KPIs, makes the brand super happy, makes your partner super happy, but unless people on the platform want to use it, 
it's not gonna deliver on any of those things. So the easiest way I would say to feel like you are making content that's both going to deliver on your KPIs, but also be in, uh, embraced by the platform would be to scroll your For You page and use it as your textbook and take note of the things, like Alyssa said, that you want to use, that inspires you. What are your friends posting? What is getting that virality? What is becoming a community moment? And then take learnings from that and see how you can apply it. So something like with this Pluto campaign, we know that people love the personality quizzes. We've seen those head tilt filters so many times. They're kind of bread and butter on the platform at yeah. this point. Uh, the movie posters was a nice additional ad that could spark even more um, creation on the platform. So I would say working like that would be a great way for affects creators to work with brands. Wow, very helpful tips. And thank you both for joining us. And Alyssa, I'm looking forward to working with you on your next campaign. Us too, super excited. And thank you all for joining us. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next session. Unlocking the power of templates, a deep dive session. What's up y'all and welcome to Effect House. Effect House is a software that you can use to make augmented reality effects for TikTok. Today, we're gonna get you started with learning how to use Effect House so you can become a master creator in no time. If you haven't already, you'll wanna download Effect House, which you can do by going to our website at effecthouse.tiktok.com. There, you can click on the download button in the upper right and choose the correct version for your computer. All right, so once you have Effect House downloaded, you'll be prompted to log in with your TikTok account, which you can do by scanning the QR code with the add friends function on the TikTok app or by logging in via desktop. Now that we're logged in, let's take a look at our homepage. At the top, you'll see banners showcasing feature highlights and how you can get involved with the Effect House community. So be sure to keep an eye out for cool new things. Beneath the banners, you'll find the most recent projects you've been working on, as well as a few recommended templates. Templates are pre-made effects that you can open and modify to your liking. They're a really great way to dive into effect creation since they often showcase cool capabilities and allow you to make awesome effects without having to start from scratch. If you want to create a new project from scratch, you can click on the Create Project button, and you can also click on the Open Project button to browse through your files on your computer. Down here, there are links to the Effect House website and our learning resources. Be sure to check those out. The learning resources page has step-by-step -step tutorials, guides, and tips for the best practices. Now that we've seen the homepage, let's actually try to make an effect. I'm going to use one of these pre-made templates to start with. Here, we are inside the Effect House workspace. This interface is composed of a few different panels, so let's walk through each one and define some of the basic terms while we're at it. First, let's look at the preview panel, which shows a preview of your effect, and it mimics the TikTok interface on your phone. You can actually change the preview media from this menu, and you can even use the video feed from your webcam. In the upper left of our workspace, we have the hierarchy panel, which houses objects. To add an object, all you have to do is click this add button browse through the categories and select your desired object. If you select an object in the hierarchy panel, like this bling object that's already selected, you'll see that it's made up of different components, which you can view in the inspector panel. The inspector panel holds all of the components, which are the elements that actually make up and control the effect. The scene panel here shows a 3D or a 2D view of all the objects added to an effect. You can manipulate objects and control the view here. So, for example, if I add a three-dimensional object to the hierarchy panel, like a 3D image, I can click these buttons up here in the scene panel to move it around in 3D space. Rotate the object, and even scale the object's size. The Assets panel over here is where you can import or add build-in textures, materials, 3D models, and audio. 
This template comes with preloaded assets like this freckle material that you can edit the color of in the inspector panel. Uh, let's add a little bit of red, maybe? Or let's do blue. Yeah, let's do blue, that looks, that looks nice. Finally, we have the graph panel, which you can use to perform visual scripting. Visual scripting is a graph-based programming method that lets you create interactive effects without needing to write text-based code. You can make pretty impressive and detailed effects with visual scripting. So be sure to check out our online documentation and video tutorials on getting started with visual scripting. If you want to preview your effect in TikTok, you can just click on this preview in TikTok button, which generates a QR code that you can scan using the TikTok app's scanner function. Let's say that we're satisfied with our effect and now we're ready to publish it. So we'll click this submit button. We need to upload a thumbnail that represents our effect, which we can do here. Then we'll need to name the effect. And we can also add a hint for users if you want to. The effect package size is shown here. It's within the size limit, so we're good to go. Once you click upload, you'll be directed to a web page where you can define the effect category. In this case, it's beauty. Now you can add tags such as sparkle and comments as well. Finally, you will choose an active effect house challenge to submit your effect to. And now you're done. All that hard work is paid off. Now you can click submit, you'll see a success page and your effect will be reviewed by the effect house team to make sure it's good for publication. Great job. For more information on getting started with effect house, be sure to check out our documentation at effecthouse.tiktok.com. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Melody, an interactive engineer at TikTok. Sitting next to me is Garrett. Hi, what's up? My name is Garrett and I'm also an interactive engineer at TikTok. I'm really excited for this awesome session today. Yeah, me too. I'm so excited. So for today's section, uh, we're going to discuss about templates, what they are and how to use them, and how they can help to speed up the process and enhance the overall quality of the effects you create. So Garrett, can you explain to our audience what uh, the templates are? Of course. I, well, I'm pretty sure many of you are already familiar, but uh, for those who aren't, templates are a fantastic way to kickstart your effect creation. Essentially, templates are like building blocks that you can use and combine in, in various ways. And Effect House offers a variety of templates, which are a great starting point for any creation. Wow, sounds exciting. So can you show our audience where to find these templates? Absolutely. It's pretty straightforward. You just open Effect House right here, mm -hmm. and you'll see many templates right here on the home screen. Oh, is that all of them? Uh, not really, there's a lot more. If you select templates on the left side of Effect House mm -hmm. here, you'll find templates organized by category. Categories like face, their screen, body, and more. Yes, as Garrett mentioned, these templates are a really fantastic starting point. I recommend exploring them to find one that aligns with your idea. Mm, but which one should we choose for showcase today? I'd say let's go with this one, the peekaboo template. Ah, sounds scary a little bit. <laughs> it's actually pretty fun and cute and very customizable, so it's perfect. Okay, I feel better. Let's try. Okay, now that the template is open, let's see how it works. Melly, do you want to test it out? Uh, yeah, sure, let me see. Oh, it's so cute and a little bit scary. <laughs> I love it. Now look, look at the ghost on your shoulder. Wow, where did it go? Oh, okay, it's on my shoulder. Wow, such a fun effect. <laughs> So Gary, can you explain how to use this template in general? Certainly. You know, Effect House might seem overwhelming with so many options, but each template comes with a guide that details its workings. So in the hierarchy panel right here, you'll see a tip under this render node. And by examining this, you'll learn just how to adjust this template. So in this example, you see where it says, one, replace ghost texture. So let's try that first. Sure. Okay. So I've already prepared a texture and I'm gonna import it in the Assets panel. Awesome, and quick tip here. So to import any asset into Effect House, just simply drag and drop into Assets panel. Yes, exactly. So now that I have the texture here in the Asset panel, I'll find the ghost and swap out the texture. So in the Hierarchy panel here on the left, 
I'm gonna locate the ghost object. So here it is. Mm -hmm. And then in the inspector panel, I'm gonna click on texture and choose the newly imported texture. Wait, is that my face? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, just a little joke. <laughs> but jokes aside, the asset library offers fantastic assets to use in your effect. Ah, I totally agree with that. Can you also show how to find our asset library? Of course. So at the top here, you're just gonna click on the asset library button and you'll see a new window pop up where you can select on any of these category of assets. In our case, it's this category, 2D. Mm -hmm. And I'll select this tiny talk evil and I'm gonna import it. Then I'll quickly replace the current asset. Wow, that was swift. Absolutely. As mentioned, templates accelerate effect creation. With high quality assets from the asset library, creating trending effects is a breeze. Yep, but don't get too ahead of yourself. So effects usually need polishing and further customization. So could you show us how can we modify the interactions to make it more personalized? Certainly. So let's look at the next tip in the hierarchy. It says two, edit subgraph settings. Mm -hmm. So just so you know, a subgraph is a way of grouping a set of operations or nodes into a single high level node. Now this abstraction reduces complexity and keeps the main graph organized. It ensures that only tweakable parameters are visible to our users. And you can find the visual scripting panel right here. Okay, cool. As Gary pointed out, there are plenty of options to customize to your vision. Absolutely. For instance, I can adjust the circular hover radius to a value greater than two. Uh, this allows for a broader movement radius. There's other things you can tweak here too, such as enabling the shoulder switching or even the attachment point. Cool. Any additional tips on template usage? Well, I have many, but given our time restraints, here's just one more. In the hierarchy panel, some object names include brackets. Mm. And these indicate tweakable actions, like edit. For instance, you might find bright LUT filter edit. And you can select it and modify its parameters, or choose post effects edit to add your touch. Impressive, Garrett. You are really an effect wizard. <laughs> well, thanks. But with templates, anyone can be an effect wizard and gain fame on TikTok. I have also crafted many effects. Want to see my skills? Of course. I'm looking forward to it. Have you been thinking of making an effect that has customer transition just like a movie? Yes. Yeah, so with our customer transition template, you can do that. Okay. So with the template open, we can first take a look at it and see how we can use it. You see, we have four groups in the hierarchy. You know, every template we provide a tips group that will help you to understand how to use the effect and how to customize it. And because I am here, so I will be your live tips here. So that's why we can skip this part for now. And uh, let's move to the next group. Um, we have scene one, scene two, and the final rent group. So the logic behind it is everything we set up in scene one will actually be draw on a texture called like a render texture scene one. And scene two, it will be draw on the scene two render texture. So then we will use the customer material to design the transition visual effects and use the visual scripting part to control the transition progress. And the final result will be shown on this transition material render texture. And this is in the final render group. And don't worry about this part. We have already packaged all the complex part for you. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, so once we understand the logic, let's dive into the visual scripting parts and see what we can customize in the interaction setting. By default, um, the effect is when you tap the screen, it will kick off this slight effect transition from top to bottom. And if you keep tapping, it will do this cool ping pong loop. Pretty neat, right? Yeah. And you will get a bunch of spots that you can make it your own. So firstly, if we customize the triggers part, you see uh, the tap on screen is selected. But what if we wanted to try some like uh, uh, triggers, blink your eyes, right? Mm. So here, we just need to check the box next to the trigger you wanted, um, and then click restart and refresh the preview and check out the effect. Blink your eyes and it will trigger that effect. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> cool, okay, good try. So what's next? Um, the transition style, right? 
So we actually prepared like a 10 transition styles for you to play with. If you go to this transition controller subgraph and uh, find the property transition style. So trying to type any numbers from zero to nine and uh, each one will represent a typical transition style we prepared for you. And you can find the corresponding transition style material under this material folder in SS panel. Yeah, we have like a slide styles, zebra, like a circle and a ripple and center, all the things you can name it, yeah. Uh, besides transition style, we also trying to give your customization freedom as much as possible. So here you can see, you can play with the transition time the way of looping or the direction of the transition, right? So with all the property settings, you will have the magic power to design the scene transition logic very quickly. Uh, once we know how to customize the transition, let's make some design for our scenes. So here, we prepared a transition effect between angel and the devil's look. And uh, we have already set up the two things to save some time, but all the assets you can uh, finding them in our assets library. Mm. Okay, since the things are ready, let's customize the transition we want. I think the circle fade would be nice for yeah. this one, right? So let me type the number nine transition and let's use mouse open to trigger the transition. Okay, cool, everything is ready. Let's refresh it and try. Open my mouse and you see, there wow. is a transition. That's amazing. <laughs> we did it. Melody, I'll say you're pretty awesome at making effects too. But as you can see, using templates to create effects is a breeze and it's super fun. Not only easy and fun, but it's also incredibly quick to bring your ideas to life. Yeah, and with the asset library, you don't need to be an artist to have assets. Just search for your vision and you'll likely find a fitting asset. So for those who are waiting to deep dive into templates and effect house, we have comprehensive documentation for each templates on our website. Just visit effecthouse.tiktok.com and click on the Learn tab. The section will offer plenty of information to guide you there. And don't forget, Melody and other TikTok experts host a weekly live stream sharing tips and tricks on using Effect House. Join us for these insightful sessions. We hope you found this session valuable. Using templates, you can easily and quickly design amazing effects, get creative, and surprise us with your talents. But we are already so impressed to see so many amazing effects made with Effect House templates. TikTok awaits your creativity. Unleash it with the power of templates. And we look forward to seeing your amazing effects. And thank you all for joining us today. Until next time, keep creating. Bye everyone, see you in the next session. Bye. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next session. Creating Visual Wonders, a deep dive into Effect House's rendering.
Hi there, everyone. I'm Ali, product manager at TikTok. We're really happy to have you here with us for a cool session on making awesome rendering with the graph feature in Effect House. In today's session, we're lucky to have our amazing interactive engineer, Rustin, joining us. He's here to share some cool tips and tricks on how to get started with the material editor. During this session, we'll share some handy tips and secrets on using the material editor. And guess what? We've got a surprise to show you at the end. So don't go anywhere, stick around, because we're about to unveil a wonderful new feature that we're super duper excited about. Stay tuned. Before we dive into the exciting world of graphs, let's take a moment to unravel the mystery. So Rustin, please say hi and let us know what on earth is this material editor all about? And how in the name of all things digital can transform the visual into stunning masterpieces? Hey there, I'm Rustin, your friendly shader wizard, and today we're diving deep into the world of custom materials and shader customization. The material editor is a crucial tool in the world of effect creation. It allows users to specify the appearance of each pixel on the screen, effectively defining how objects should look. To achieve this, the Material Editor generates a program known as a shader. Shaders play a vital role in instructing the GPU on how to render visuals accurately. For instance, consider a scenario where you have an effect featuring water. To create realistic water effects, shaders are employed. With the aid of shaders, you can control factors such as the water's color, foam shape, and how its vertices should be positioned to simulate movements like waves. Mm, I have a question here. Why would a creator want to make an effect with a shader in general and not use textures? Great question. Shaders are essential for creating real-time visual effects. Textures, on the other hand, are static images that can be mapped onto 3D objects. Shaders allow you to create dynamic, interactive effects that respond to user input, changing effect conditions, or other factors in real time. For instance, with shaders, you have the power to transform the appearance of water. You can make it resemble a turbulent, stormy ocean, or transition it into calm, shallow water, all in real time, thanks to shaders. When you create a shader, you can define parameters that allow you to dynamically adjust and alter the appearance of the water, or any shader you happen to be working on. Mm, another question. So why do our creators want to learn about shader and how to use them? High quality effects are beloved and often popular on TikTok. So the higher the quality of your effect, the better positioned it is to resonate with a broader audience. Brands will also often look to create effects that are more polished and customized. So by mastering Material Editor, creators can better position themselves to work with brands. Wow, that is amazing. So how shaders work and how to create one? Typically, shaders are written using code, which can be a complex task for those unfamiliar with programming. However, Material Editor simplifies this process significantly. Instead of writing lines of code, users work within a graph framework where they connect nodes to define the shader's behavior. The real advantage here is the instant feedback provided by Material Editor, allowing users to see the visual results of their changes without any coding hassle. This makes shader creation accessible and fun for both newcomers and experienced effect creators. With Effect House and Material Editor, you can easily create dynamic effects that inspire trends on TikTok. I know this might be a little bit complicated, but we're going to keep it fun and engaging, so don't worry if you're new to this. Let's try, Rustin. Learning about shaders doesn't have to be boring. So let's get started, shall we? Absolutely, Ellie. To kick things off, we're going to create our very own custom material to make everything look awesome. Custom materials are like our artist's palette, and they contain the special recipe, the shader. We can customize the shader using the material editor. So how do we create one of these custom materials? Great question, Ellie. To create a custom material, you'll want to head over to the Assets panel. There's a little plus icon. Click on it and search for custom material. When you find it, select empty material. As soon as you click on it, a new panel called material editor appears in the effect house. This is where the real fun begins. You can create graphs, connect them together, and cook up some stunning visuals that will blow your mind. That sounds great. But here's a question for you. How can we actually see what these custom materials look like in action? We can apply these custom materials to all sorts of objects, whether they're 3D or 2D. Today, for our session, I'm going to apply the material to a screen image object so we can get a better view. But remember, all the stuff I'm about to share works for both 2D and 3D objects. To create a screen image, head over to the Hierarchy panel. You'll spot a Add Object button. Click on it and search for Screen Image. 
Now, just drag and drop that newly created custom material onto your screen image. Your shader is now being rendered right there on the image component. So, what's next? How can we start customizing our shader and understanding how it works? When you open up the material editor, you'll notice a shader node waiting for you. Traditionally, in the world of graphics programming, there are two smaller programs called the Fragment Shader and the Vertex Shader. Think of the Fragment Shader as the artist who decides the color of each pixel on your screen, and the Vertex Shader as the architect who determines where each vertex of a mesh should be placed in 3D space. Take a closer look at the Shader node. You'll see it has four inputs. The very first one is Fragment Input, which is responsible for color, and the rest are Vertex Inputs, responsible for vertex positions and directions. Let's dive into a super simple task, changing colors. To do that, just click on the color and change it. Watch as the image's color changes in real time. If you've ever looked at other materials, you might have noticed they have some properties exposed for users to customize. Well, guess what? We can do the same thing using the material editor. To make this happen, we need to create variables for each property we want to customize. So let's empower our users with customization superpowers. To create these customizable parameters, Click on the Hamburger Menu button in the Material Editor panel. You'll see a small side panel pop up. Here's where you define a variable. Click on the plus button and you'll see a list of properties you can create. Since we want to customize the color, we'll select Color. Now it's time to give our parameter a name. In this case, we'll call it Base Color. Always remember to name your parameters, folks. Trust me, things can get messy real fast and you don't want to lose track of what each parameter is responsible for. Now that we've got our color parameter all set up, Let's bring it into the graph section. Just click on the small circle button and you'll see a brown node pop up in the graph section. Quick tip, my fellow creators, all nodes colored brown are the parameters defined by users. These parameters can be customized using the inspector panel without modifying the logic of our shader. Fantastic, folks. We've successfully created a parameter that allows us to customize the color of our shader in real time. This is really cool, Rustin. But I've got a challenge for you now. I'm a big fan of gradients in my work. They like add that extra room to my effects. Can we create a gradient using the material editor? What node should we use for that? Creating gradients is a breeze, but before we jump into it, let's chat briefly about coordinates. The material editor gives us two default coordinates to work with, texture coord and screen coord. The texture coord is all about how each texture is mapped to 2D or 3D objects. These coordinates are often generated by 3D tools but you can make modifications to them right here in the effect house. The screen coord is all about how textures are mapped based on the screen's height and width. Rustin, can you show us how these coordinates work in practice? Absolutely, Ellie. To visualize this, let's create a texture coord node. To do that, right click on the graph section, select add node, and search for texture coord. Select it. Now, you'll notice that the outputs of the texture coord are vector two which means they have both X and Y values. Click on the UV output of the texture cord and connect it to the color input of the shader node. Now you'll see some green and red colors on the image. Rustin, I'm curious, why are we seeing this mango color? Great question, Ellie. As I mentioned earlier, these coordinates come in a vector two format, which means they have both X and Y values. The reason we're seeing mango colors is that the X coordinate is now represented as red and the Y coordinate is represented as green. Since it's vector two, we don't have a blue component, which is why you're not seeing any blue colors. To view these coordinates separately, you can use the split node. Right click in the graph section again, select add node and search for split. When you connect the output of the texture cord to the split node, you'll see two output options. One outputs the X coordinate and the other outputs the Y coordinate. Connect the first one to the main shader and you'll see a gradient appear on the screen. Wow, this is fascinating. So why are we seeing this black and white colors? Great question. Our texture coordinates range from zero to one. In shader language, zero represents black and one represents white. This means that our values are increasing from zero to one as we move across the mesh. Got it. So if we were to connect the second output of the split node to the main shader, it will create a gradient from top to bottom since it's the Y coordinate, correct? You're absolutely right, Ellie. Connecting the second output of the split node to the main shader would indeed create a gradient from top to bottom as it controls the Y coordinate. Great observation. Now that we have our gradient, how can I make it the colors that I want? To customize the colors of your gradient, you need to tell the shader how to interpolate between black and white to achieve the desired colors. And guess what? We have just the node for that. 
It's called the LERP node. This node allows us to interpolate between two values based on a provided factor, which in our case will be the output of the split node. To create the LERP node, you already know the drill, right click in the graph section and search for the LERP node. Now, check out the LERP node. It's got three inputs. The first two inputs are the colors you want to interpolate between, and the last one is the output of the split node. Connect the output of the split node to the weight input of the LERP node, and then connect the output of the LERP node to the main shader node. Hold on a sec, Rosting. Why is everything black now? Do we break anything? Don't worry, Ellie. We're just getting started. The reason it's black is that we're currently interpolating between zero and zero. To fix this, we need to connect the colors we want to interpolate between to the first two inputs of the LERP node. We already have one color node. Let's quickly create one more and connect both of them to the LERP node. Now you'll see it's all white, but here's the magic trick. Select your material, look at the inspector panel, and you'll find two color options provided. Change these two colors to your heart's content, and voila you've got yourself a custom color gradient. This is amazing. I've heard that there's a lot of math behind the shaders. Can you create an example using math to customize our gradient? Absolutely, Ellie. Math is the secret sauce behind many shaders, and it can give you incredible control over your visuals. Let's start by using math to change the position of our gradient. So if we switch our gradient colors back to black and white, we know that black represents zero and white represents one. Essentially, we're interpolating between zero and one. If we want to move our gradient, we can simply add or subtract a number from our factor value. Let's put this into action. Click on the graph and add an add node. Connect the output of the split node to the add node, and then connect the output of the add node to the lerp node. Now we have the ability to add any value to our texture coordinates x channel. To add a number, we'll create a new variable. But this time, our variable type will be float because we want to modify a number instead of changing color. Let's call this float position and connect it to the other end of the add node. In the inspector panel, if I change the value of position, you can see that the placement of our gradient is now moving. For example, if we put negative one, you'll see all white. One will be all black and zero will be half white and half black. Quick tip here, you can create a slider for this value by selecting the variable and then enabling enable min and enable max. Now you can set min to negative one and max to one giving you a nice slider control for easy adjustments. This is seriously cool. I can see how using math can make creating effects so much more flexible and fun. Thanks for showing us this awesome trick. I've learned so much, but is it possible to blend between two textures instead of two colors? Absolutely, Ellie. That's a great idea. To blend between two textures, we need to create two texture 2D variables instead of colors. These texture 2D variables are shader inputs where users can provide any texture they want to use. So let's create two texture 2D variables here. I'll call one text A and the other one text B. Now let's bring them into the graph. But as you can see, if I try to connect the texture 2D inputs directly to the LERP node, it won't work. Hmm, why not? This is getting a little bit complicated. Not to worry. In the shader world, for the GPU to understand a texture, you need to translate the texture into GPU language. This process is called sampling. Fortunately, we have a node for that called Sample Texture 2D. This node takes two inputs. One is, of course, the Texture 2D, and the second is the UV coordinate to sample the texture at. Ah, I see. Please continue, Rusting. Let's create a Sample Texture 2D node and connect our Texture 2D input to it. For the UV, we simply connect our Texture Coord node to it. We need to repeat the same process for our Text B as well. Now that we've sampled both textures, we can connect the outputs of the samples to our LERP node. All you see is a checker box, which is the default texture in the effect house. But to change that, select the shader and set a texture for both properties, and boom, we've created a blend between two textures. This is super cool. Is it possible to blend in ways other than gradient? Absolutely, Ellie. As long as you provide a value to the weight input, it'll blend the textures the way you want. As an example, I can delete the split node and instead use a noise node. You can see that our textures are blending together based on the black and white colors of the noise. You can use the math I showed you earlier to create your own amazing blending shaders and achieve various effects. Thank you so much, Rustin, for showing us how shaders work. How can I further improve my knowledge of material editor and shaders? To further improve your knowledge, be sure to check out our YouTube channel. 
we'll have plenty of streams about Material Editor and shaders. Additionally, explore the asset library and the templates because they come with lots of amazing examples that you can learn from. I can show you some of the cool stuff I've created using Material Editor. Ellie, I've had a blast showing you these Material Editor examples, but now I can't wait to see what you and the team have been secretly crafting. Thank you, Austin. We've been pouring our hearts and souls into this project, and the time has come to share it with all of you. Let's dive right in and unveil our exciting new project. VFX Editor is our new graph-based visual effects engine within Effect House. With VFX Editor, you can now create a wide range of visual effects, from fireworks to confetti, rain to fire, and any other particle that your creative mind can think of. Imagine the VFX Editor as a supercharged particle system. With the VFX Editor, you can do cooler things than before, from crafting mind-blowing simulations to grooving with procedural animations and so much more. With these tools, you can make awesome visual effects, just like in big movies. Visual effects play a crucial role in enhancing the atmosphere and storytelling of your effects. They bring Imagine World to life with captivating details that truly immerse your users in effects. Effect House is pushing the boundaries of real-time graphics, and tools like VFX Editor are a testament to that. Visual effects, once only accessible to Hollywood blockbusters, can now be achieved right here in Effect House. VFX Editor operates much like the Material Editor, allowing you to create effects by combining nodes. If you're already comfortable with Material Editor, you'll find many similarities here. And if you're new to it, don't worry. VFX Editor is a powerful tool with a whole set of capabilities to take your effects creation to the next level. Amazing! When can we expect this tool to be released? We're happy to announce that we'll be launching a beta for VFX Editor early next year. Keep an eye out for an email after the conference with a link to sign up for this beta program if you'd like to be the first to try out the new tools. Thank you all for joining us today on this exciting journey through Effect House, Material Editor, and the incredible world of VFX Editor. It's been an absolute blast sharing our knowledge and showcasing the limitless possibilities that await you in the world of real-time graphics. And a big shout out to our talented team who's been working tirelessly behind the scenes to bring these amazing tools to life. We can't wait to see what you all create with them. Remember, the Effect House community is all about creativity, innovation, and collaboration. We encourage you to dive in, explore, and push the boundaries of what's possible in real-time graphics. And don't forget to stay tuned for more updates, tutorials, and live streams on our YouTube channel, where we'll continue to share insights and tips to help you on your journey. That's right, Ellie. We're here to support you every step of the way. So keep creating, keep innovating, and most importantly, have fun on your adventures in Effect House. Thank you all for being a part of this amazing community. We can't wait to see the incredible effects you create with Effect House. Material Editor and VFX Editor. Until next time, stay creative and keep those pixels dancing. Bye everyone, see you in the next session. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next session, the Archie Awards.
Hello everyone, I'm Celine, an Effect House Community Manager. Welcome to the first ever Archie Award Ceremony, brought to you by TikTok and Effect House. This is the very first time we're highlighting our creators in a formal setting. I hope you're all dressed up in your living room with a fancy lobster dinner. I'm sure some of you might be wondering, what is Archie Awards? The short answer is, it's like the Oscars for Effect Creators or the Catalina Wine Mixer. It's our goal to celebrate the craftsmanship and creativity coming from our community of creators and inspire some of the newcomers. Our nominees were selected through a painstakingly meticulous process. Our global community managers sat together and worked backwards. What happened since Effect House launched? What memories were made? What trends took over our feeds? And what games were truly impossible to win? We took all of those things into consideration to help us select our winners. Our winners tonight will receive a global recognition from their peers and their Effect House family, and a very special gift card from our team. To all of our creators and nominees, your contribution has shaped Effect House to the dynamic platform it is today. Without further ado, let's dive into the Archie Awards. Here's to creativity, innovation, and the future of effects. That was beautifully said. Everyone give it up one more time for Celine. I'm Fran, a Fact House community lead for the EMEA region. It's so exciting to be here at the first ever Archie Awards. I'm honestly starstruck to see a lot of you all in one place. Please give a big round of applause for yourselves. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. I'm going to get the AR ball rolling and start announcing a few of our winners. The Effect House Pioneer Award. The Effect House Pioneer is someone who has been with Effect House from the very beginning. Archie is only one and a half years old, so it's not really that long, but it's the thought and persistence that counts in this instance. The Effect House pioneers have also grown with us over time. These remarkable individuals have played an instrumental role in shaping the values and essence of Effect House. And we extend our heartfelt gratitude to each one of them for their outstanding achievements. And the winner is... The Effect House Rising Star Award. The Effect House Rising Star is a creator who has joined Effect House more recently, but has made their presence felt with their captivating style and creativity. And the winner is... The Video Producer Award. The Video Producer Award goes to the creator who goes above and beyond for creating original videos on TikTok to promote their effects. The lighting is impeccable. The music, the transitions, chef kiss. We laugh, we cry, and then we repost. And the winner is... The Archie Innovation Award. The Archie Innovation Award is for the creator who is continually pushing the boundaries of what's possible on Effect House. You wow us and the community every single time. And the winner is... The Game Master Award. The Game Master Award is for the creator who captivates everyone on TikTok with fun and addicting games. Even games that Archie swears are impossible. And the winner is... Hey everybody, Miles here. Are you enjoying the Archie Awards so far? Let's keep this party going. The Outstanding Partnership Award. The Outstanding Partnership Award goes to the creator duo who made the best collaborative effect project. This award holds a special place in our hearts because it epitomizes the collaborative spirit that is at the core of Effect House. It's a testament to our firm belief in the magic that unfolds when talented individuals come together, work hand in hand, and create something extraordinary. And the winner is... The Effect House Trendsetter Award. 
The Effect House Trendsetter Award goes out to the creator who not only captures the eyes and ears of the Effect House community, they also capture our hearts. Adored by numerous superstar celebrities and our cherished TikTok influencers, this creator has a unique and recognizable aesthetic that sets the tone for future effect creation. And the winner is... The Community Champion Award. These individuals are the unsung heroes who play a pivotal role in shaping our community, injecting it with energy and vibrancy. Their unwavering dedication and willingness to extend a helping hand or welcome newcomers not only cultivate a sense of togetherness, but also ignite the spirit of active participation within our Effect House family. These Effect House creators don't just build Effect House, they turn it into an Effect Home. And the winner is... Hi everyone, I know you missed me. I'm back to announce our final award. Presenting the Effect House Story Video Awards. In November, we invited you to share your captivating videos, unveiling your Effect House journey. Your submissions showcase the evolution of your very first effect to your latest masterpiece, highlighted the communal joy your creation has brought, and even celebrated those surreal magical moments when your idol used your effects. What's more, you shared what Effect House means to you. We're immensely grateful to all who poured their hearts into these videos. They made us laugh, nod in agreement, and even shed a tear. Witnessing how Effect House has transformed your lives has been nothing short of incredible. Now, we're excited to pay tribute to the exceptional achievements and creative journeys within the Effect House community. Let's come together in this inspiring celebration of our shared accomplishments. And the winner is... That concludes the 2023 Archie Awards. Thank you so much for being here. We are so happy we got to celebrate the creator community and we will continue to do so on Discord, on our socials, and on future events. You don't have to go home, although I do imagine that a lot of you are already there. But unfortunately, you do have to leave this stream. Goodbye for now, and we hope to see you on the next Effect House session. Thanks for watching Open House. You can catch all the sessions on demand on our website at effecthouse.tiktok.com.